futures trying to get back to the upside here this morning as we get going on a Tuesday morning coming off some heavy selling into the close yesterday as we saw uh, more Middle East uh, headlines uh, causing the market to yeah, do that into the close. We basically end the day at session lows. We are positive on the morning, but uh, only just right now, 0.01 for the NASDAQ overall. Uh, again, all eyes on uh, developments coming out of the Middle East. We'll keep an eye on any further comments to uh, have a look at this morning. Um, gold back to the upside this morning, the dollar back to the upside as well. We'll touch on uh, both of those hopefully coming up this morning. Uh, Tesla, more headlines. We'll touch on this uh, job cuts report that came out Initially yesterday, but if you remember late in the day, there, Bloomberg was actually the first to report it that it was going to be closer to 20 percent, not necessarily 10 percent. I think it ends up being around uh, 14 or 15. Microsoft with more headlines this morning, Intel and uh, chips back to the upside here oh, yeah. as well a little bit. So uh, analysts liking some of the uh, semiconductors this morning. Speaking of Intel going to uh, come up with a China friendly chip. Yeah, like just like um AMD and uh, NVIDIA had to do after the Biden administration came out with that chip embargo. So we'll see exactly if they get it right the first time around. Uh, NVIDIA did not. You'll recall they made the A100 and the B100 specifically for that. Also, Brendo, a lot of uh, banks reporting today, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, uh, reporting positive net interest income. So it looks like as if that is not going to be an issue as much as analysts expected. Now they're paying out in... Um, in interest on savings, yeah. not as much uh, as they're getting on loans. Yeah, so more bank action to come today. I'm just seeing Canadian CPI coming across here. Downside, yay Canada, 0.6% <laughs> versus 0.7 forecast there. Year over year, 2.9 versus 2.9 expected as well. Tiff Macklin's gonna be in Washington today talking with uh, Jay Powell. Oh. Uh, about one o'clock this afternoon. So they're they're going to be speaking at uh, an event together, which I don't think has happened before. If it has, I wasn't aware of that. But anyways, yeah, uh, we have Jay Powell to look forward to, guys, coming up this afternoon. Yeah, good morning. That's always fun. I realize little, we had Jay Powell. Little Bedsby. Well, it's one of those, like... He's talking with the Bank of Canada, like they're just kind of doing that little power. Powell's talking action. with the Bank of Canada? Well, it's like some organized talk or discussion or pan, whatever they call these things. Okay. So whether or not there's actually anything policy related that will be stuff he hasn't said, I think remains to be seen. Who knows? It kind of goes either way with those. That said, we'll always keep our ear to the ground. Keep it real. Uh, you've got, you have a few earnings calls that are going to be going on in the morning show. UNH's, I think, uh, obviously, uh, Morgan Stanley reported this morning. They're both up. Tesla's not up. Uh, Tesla broke the 160 level uh, overnight, so the flat bottom break has pretty much already happened, and uh, the pressure on the EVs remains. I saw Neo was down significantly. Rivian's kind of holding on to those lows. But underneath 160, the stock's under some pressure. They report in one week today they got to put up or shut up. But a lot happening. I mean, it was weird. Like, NVIDIA bounced off 850 already this pre-market. Um, already seeing some names. Uh, Coinbase bounced off of its 50-period moving average down around 216. So there were some big levels that have already come into play with slight rallies in the overnight after what was a nasty move down in yesterday's trade. That said, a bunch of these things are short still or not. I'm talking about those EVs for sure. Yeah, looking, wow, I didn't even realize. We are really close there. I was looking at AMD fading this pop. It's up 1% here today. I still thinking pretty short. Uh, as long as we're under 18,000, we're at 17.9 right now. I mean, yesterday's uh, dump in the NASDAQ. Yeah, it sucked because it was pretty quick. I mean, we've seen these moves. Like, look how fast. I mean, sure, we have some nice moves to the upside, but... These, you know, sort of, let me go to a 90 minute chart here because I think we're gonna need to get a bigger uh, look to see exactly what we're dealing with. It's just some of these down pushes are pretty quick and then they're bought right back up like almost, you know, every single time. I mean, here back in uh, Mar early March, we had a couple days here, a couple, you know, situations. But after that, we've been some bouncing back up and I just feel that there is a possibility that 17.8 we made that comment yesterday. Remember, if we said if we break 18,000, then we're probably getting into this area right there in that next level of 17.8. And I mean, it's not like it's rocket science, but now we're right there again. 
So I wonder if we're going to test that little bottom wick one more time before it's launching pad to the upside. So I'm trying to fade any pops that happen right now. I still think we, we go back and test yesterday's low. So let's just see what happens. It's 100 points higher right now. Um, and we have an hour till the market opens. But Fed speak, probably not much. We already know it's going to be a hold on the rates there uh, with not, nothing expected here for the May 1st. And that's only a couple weeks away at this point. So I guess we'll just have to hear what they have to say. But with stocks not moving, I mean, besides Tesla, AMD's up. Tesla's cranking lower as they look more and more into uh, this work cut or this layoff. Down 2%, broke through that 160 finally. So what are we going to do? Short this thing? What do you think? Well, anytime a flat bottom breaks, the plan of action for me is short underneath it. If it goes green, that's 161.5. Yeah. Like to me, that's a, if it goes green today, it's a failed break at that level, and that's actually a little bit bullish in the short term. So if it's above that price, I'm not touching the short. But someone just in the chat, there was just a question, what happened to NEO? Same thing that's been happening every day. I hate to, like, it's not, it's, not to bag, it's not to bag on the stock or anything, but if the question is what happened to NEO, like, if Tesla's weak and Xpeng's weak and yesterday Lee Auto broke support, I mean, NEO gave up 440 and tanked almost 10% two days ago, then tanked pretty much almost 10% yesterday. I think it was barely not 10%. So that's good, I suppose. And it's just making fresh lows every single day. But Rivian's making fresh lows every single day. And what was the, what was the EV stock that was up yesterday? Anybody? Uh, Fisker on the OTC. And well, it's, yeah, Fisker was up 100%. Fisker's the best, one of the best stocks. It was the, it's, I think it was the only EV name that was up yesterday, I think. But they're, they're just getting crushed right now. And until something changes, like what happens the second we knew they were pushing up rates, these, like the trend is sort of accelerated to the downside on most of the EV names. And I think that's something that's kind of obvious in hindsight, but you still got to try to go out and find the short in it every single day. Uh, just reading a note on uh, J&J &J here, just popping up in front of me. J&J uh, &J first quarter revenue misses as Stellara sales fall short for uh, Johnson & Johnson. Uh, so down here, basically right at this low right now. Uh, if you go out to, that's a weekly chart. If you go out to a weekly chart for uh, Johnson & Johnson. A few other things, I mentioned this late in the day yesterday. Uh, a few other things of note. Peloton lower again this morning. Actually gapping lower here. Um, was all-time lows at the end of the day yesterday. I was, I was reading a story that was actually grouping a few of these together. Here's AMC. All-time lows. Uh, two, what is this, 220 on AMC this morning. That's a weekly chart. Uh, GME, another one, not all-time lows, obviously, but uh, breaking long-term lows right now, in fact, uh, $9.80. So uh, I was reading a story this morning that had a whole bunch of stocks that were not faring too well in this current market. No, Peloton's been a, a hot mess for a while now, and it's not getting any better. So they tried to switch it up by offering a free subscription to its uh, fitness app with the idea that they were gonna funnel you in into a paid subscription. That was the whole idea. It ended up cannibalizing that whole subscription model and they had to get rid of the entire thing. So now it's free and there's nothing to monetize here. So a bit of a problem here for Peloton. I gotta tell you anecdotally, Brendo, I'm seeing these things go for 405 bucks on uh, Facebook Marketplace. So people are not holding on to no. them and they're getting rid of them. Yeah, so. and, and it wasn't too long ago. I mean, you and I were sitting here talking about 1,200, 1,500. Yes. Um, so the prices are, are falling off a cliff in a hurry. Uh, I was just double checking on, I was hearing some comments on uh, Morgan Stanley. Uh, 9.30 apparently for the call for MS. So uh, maybe just a headline coming across there for uh, Morgan Stanley obviously reported this morning as well. Good, I mean, uh, the stock went up. We say good report, bad report. Look, at the end of the day, uh, it, there's a reaction to the earnings and it doesn't really matter uh, what the report is. And we said the good thing for them was that they were going to have gotten kind of smashed on the, on the bad news last week. So you were kind of bouncing off support, which makes it easier for you to have a favorable uh, bounce. Because I think BAC, when I looked at it, it's like, okay, well, I didn't see anything that said BAC had a, a bad report, if not a, not a good one. And it was dead flat. So I think Morgan Stanley is just trying to get back up to the top. All that said, they still do have an investigation weighing, in, weighing on them. If this gets back to what is major support in the mid-90s, uh, I would, I got to just have to think it's a sell up there if we see 93, 94, 95 today. So uh, on earnings, 
probably wouldn't normally play this, but because it because they had that report last week and because of how big the resistance level is, if it does a rally into that 90 in the mid 90s, I think it's a short up there. We'll likely be sitting this one out today. I'm not sure we're even going to get a chance to trade at that level. Usually, I don't think I'd be paying attention to it, but if it does that kind of a crazy move, I just feel like that should be a fade up there in the mid 90s. So we'll we'll wait for it. I mean, if we if we break 93, then. I guess we'll set an alert for that. We're still a few dollars away. That would be quite the bounce. I mean, you're, at that point, you're talking about 8 or 9% to the upside on Morgan Stanley to get into that resistance. But I think it's worth a look. I don't like the idea of trading these when the earnings call is going on. Comment here or comment there. You can find yourself uh, caught in a lot of trouble. So Morgan Stanley, I'll be sitting it out unless we do get a rally far enough into those 90s. Look, we had a, um, we were trading this. It was a great trade. It was a great opportunity to uh, be here with us and watch what can happen when live news hits. But remember, we said the same thing yesterday and the day before. I mean, yesterday we were up to 86.50. That would have been a great bottom to get, but who knew about that? This one, 85.50. And if you just look at the daily chart, forget about what's going to happen to it. That's the NASDAQ. I mean, it came right into this level. We, Morgan Stanley was rocking it. I mean, it's not near its highs, but it was getting there, you know, breaking through this 94, 95 area. So now it's just got to do that. And I think when it does, then I do think it starts to go higher. That was a gift um, on that. I mean, anti-money laundering, look, it's not going to probably end well, but at the end of the day, it's going to wind up to being a fine. And a lot of these banks can, can cover that. So I really like that dip buy into 85 and it was just a missed opportunity. I still think you want to buy I mean, I think Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan, the two names, the two banks that I was in, uh, not anymore, but Goldman continues to rock. I mean, they had a great, great report yesterday, uh, very well valued, pretty much across the board. It, 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 they're just holding their book value. J.P. Morgan as well, down here at 183. I think this is, this is another one that you could probably buy. The problem with this is you're not really into any, you know, areas of support yet. I feel like you can get to 175 and then pull the trigger, but if you're dollar cost averaging or looking to get into a bank, I mean, I feel like this is a decent opportunity right here as well. Wells Fargo, um, again, pretty decent report there on, on Friday, held up, doing well. You could see a nice little battle back, holding this 56 level, breakthrough 58. End of the day, there's a lot of these names that are looking to break out. That Morgan Stanley at 94, 95. Here's Wells Fargo at 58. You know, how good of a top break does this look like? I mean, you're looking at EV names breaking the bottom or anything lately that's been breaking the bottom, you get downside. Well, why not stick with a name that's reported? We know, you know, we know the devil in this, right? We've already get, got the, da the stats. So I like this break of 5850 on Wells Fargo. I mean, go long on that name, another Berkshire name that they like. So, I mean, I think some of the banks look pretty healthy. We always talk about XLF as well, and then we're gonna throw it back to these guys in a minute, but XLF, again, holding up decently. We did have a pullback, and then yesterday saved. And into, again, we were, all, we were talking on the show, 38, 39 maybe for XLF, but with Morgan today, I feel like this is a decent buy as well. So some of these ETFs down five to 8% might be worth picking up here after we've seen these bank earnings. Uh, let's talk about uh, crypto here, downside a little bit this morning. We were just going through a list of uh, some of the equities related, um, also negative to say the least. But this is a weekly chart. If you go out to uh, Bitcoin, we're getting back into some long-term levels once again. Uh, three weeks in a row now, uh, definitely red candles forming here for uh, BTC, so under pressure as well. Yeah, and that's at the same time we're seeing gold make all-time highs, which is interesting because then you have Peter Schiff uh, coming in and saying, sell your fool's gold and buy the real thing here, according to uh, Mr. Schiff. So uh, keep your eye on gold today. Yeah, but I want to talk, talk about the miners. The miners are in a lot of trouble here. You have Mara breaking down below 15 bucks. It's down 36.5% year over year. Riot's down 46, HUD 8 down 47. Yet CleanSpark up 32%. Uh, year to date, Brendo. So doing something right over there. Uh, we had, uh, if anyone's joining today and wasn't around yesterday, just be aware there's going to be some holes in our charts. Uh, we had uh, a data outage yesterday uh, about midday. So that's what this is. Thank you. 
right there. Um, you'll see that on uh, a lot of charts today. 222, uh, meanwhile, was basically the close for Coinbase, which is um, pretty good support here, guys, for Coin. Yeah, that looked, Coinbase, you've got the 50 period simple moving average into play, and it's pulled back pretty heftily from the uh, 287, I think was the high. Heftily. Heftily? I don't know. Heftily. Is heftily. What, yeah, that was, I don't even that know was, if that was a good one. I thought, if it's a word. Is it yeah, not a word? Heftily? I don't know, man. But I thought, uh, I thought it was a good word. it's been nasty on Coinbase the last hot minute going into uh, this week we got the halving. Obviously, it doesn't have to follow Bitcoin exactly, but when Bitcoin pulls back, fails 70,000, and we get that dip into 62, then Coinbase will come down as well. So you have, you have some wicks down here at 216, and you have the 50 period at 216 as well. The way I see it, if it's going to bounce somewhere, this would be the spot. Every time it's gone down here, there's been a snap back to the upside. So if I see 216 today, I think that's worthy of like a look for a quick dip buy. It already tested that early in the pre-market. Like... Overnight, well, really early this morning, you would have seen NVIDIA off 850, Coinbase on light volume off that 216. If it breaks 215, however, like to me, underneath that number, it's just like flat bottom break, bye bye So I'd rather, like, I'd, I'd go for a long, uh, it's a 16 level, looking for a bounce off that daily level. But if it's not holding on to this and it's underneath 215, then I don't see why I can't have another flush type day. So that's a level I'm willing to play in either direction key support for Coinbase. And if you think it's just Coinbase that's at key prices, we'll have a look at Mara as well. I mean, Mara is pulled, has pulled right back in. It's not quite at the $14 level. It's just broken 15 now. But the $14 level was a big area of support the last you know, half year or so, starting in December and then back in January. And each time it's bounced off here, it's doubled up. I don't know that that's going to happen this time. The miner's been under pressure, obviously, because of the halving not being good for them. If that level gets breached today, I think you could have a little bit of a push down as well. But, I mean, Coinbase, Mara, both of them, you have to keep your ear to the ground on Bitcoin. If we start rallying, you know, get back to like 65 or something, then uh, you might miss the opportunity to get those support levels. Where I, like, I like defending Coinbase. I probably wouldn't be on the bit of Mara at the 14, but I'll give a shot at Coinbase off that 216 level. Yeah, I was uh, just, just talking about Bitcoin here. I mean, here's a little bit of a bigger chart going back, I don't know, about a, about a month. I mean, this is just a four-hour chart right now. But uh, goes back into here, this bottom back on March 20th, 61. It looks like this area. I mean, either way, you're going to look at 60 as an even level. So right now... Uh, Bitcoin is trading, uh, what was the current price right here? 63 and change. So I'm actually going to write this down. I mean, I think Bitcoin 60,000 bounce. So if we're thinking the, you know, I'm going to put it on, on, on the sticky note. I think that if we can bounce in and around this area, it's worth a shot. I mean, the NASDAQ, I feel like is going to be red today. It's starting to bounce upside, which is nice, but if the market really starts to slip, we've seen Bitcoin slip with it. And it's just one of those things where if we're going to sit here and trade, whoopsies, we might as well. Um, there's a one minute chart like we've already been down there. So we were already here at 61.6. So this is a very good possibility of another dip into this area. Look at the consolidation trying to make up its mind before popping. Right now, it's all of a sudden pretty clean again. Dip buying Bitcoin into 60,000, I'm actually thinking that this is going to be a really great trade. -off. I mean, there it is again overnight into 61.6. So what's up with that? So I'm thinking buying some of these move downs, uh, this move down here in BTC looks to be pretty good. Some of these altcoins, though, have really taken it on the, uh, on the noggin. It's like a chin, you know, noggin your head. Uh, I mean... 10% Bitcoin, Ethereum. Ethereum might be the one, man. That's down 15% uh, this week alone. Solana, I mean, 
we, we, I told you, we unstake some of this and we're able to get some out. Um, Dogecoin 15 is actually pretty good. I remember when Nimit, shout out to Nimit in the chat, talked about that at 12 cents. It went to 22 or 23. Cardano, we talked about unstaking some of that as well. That's down to 45 from 65. So some of these names really, I mean, look at these numbers. 26, 28, 20, 25, 21, you know? Some of the crypto names continue to get beat up. And I don't know if it's uh, crypto winter, summer, or what, but we have the halving coming. And I just feel that if you're willing to step in front of some of this, there's going to be either great opportunities to buy some of these dips, or if we break 60, and the good thing about the trade, Neil, is that if you break 60,000, you could get out. Like you can put yeah. stops in. Bitcoin is a 64-hour 64, 64 market. It's a 64-hour market Better as we're at 63,000. Um, but no, 24 hours. So if you're on Coinbase Pro or whatever your exchange is, I, I'm assuming you're able to put stop orders in. So if you can do that, that's the best part about trading crypto on exchange rather than holding iBit because if you, you, know, you could trade iBit and the next thing you know, if you come in the very next day, and you bought it today at 35, smack it down, it breaks through 60,000, you wake up the next day and this is at 32. So you can exit your trade a little quicker. What's up, my guy? Uh, playing with Bitcoin itself. So, all right, well, I don't know if Bitcoin got upgraded or downgraded lately, but we're gonna have some equity names at the screen with Adara. No crypto related names here, but we do have a banking name to kick off the list. Goldman Sachs here after that stellar earnings report yesterday, getting an upgrade from Argus. AMD getting upgraded by both Evercore, ISI and HSBC. So nice morning for AMD. Evercore, ISI also initiating positive coverage on NVIDIA. So lots of semiconductors to keep an eye on here. Kroger getting upgraded here from Wells Fargo and trading up about one plus percent right now. Whereas DraftKings getting a price target increase to 55 and an upgrade from Needham. For downgrades, Honeywell kicking off this list with a downgrade from Deutsche Bank. Uh, Spirit getting downgraded by TD Cowan, now down about 1.5%. Hims and hers <clears throat> health down over 4% after this downgrade from Jefferies Financial. And last but not least, Morgan Stanley downgrading Integral Ad Service. So a bit of a mixed bag here, guys. Is it freezing in here? Uh, my well, see, my, my hands are cold. My hands are cold every day. You guys see me do this. Hedge and Randy. But uh, DraftKings is bouncing off the 50 period, so you get an upgrade. Uh, can't actually manipulate the chart with a coffee in my hand. You get an upgrade. You get this nice little bounce. I I, I hesitate to call 44 support just because you wicked you wicked that level on April 2nd. Really, like $40 looks much more interesting as you know, resistance, consolidation, support level in there. But the 50 period is always something if you can hang on to it. A nice little close above that would be good today. So, I mean, it's worth watching at 44. The volume on a day where basically every, on the moves that we saw yesterday, all of the tech names that we regularly trade are, had big moves and are expected to be volatile today. And they're all pretty much on the radar. You just got to pick your poison. The EV names are going to be on the radar again. You have some bank earnings if you're into trading that. So I don't know that you want to jump into something on an upgrade without a bunch of volume, but DraftKings, I like a hold of the 50 period. Even better if it just closes above and then maybe a chance, even if it puts in a lower high again, you can put in a lower high and be at 46 and a half and be continuing this trend down from 50. All you need is a little bit of a bounce uh, today. So good luck. Didn't realize it was back at the 50 period on DraftKings. Yeah, yeah. I was going to look at DraftKings as well, but that is an interesting name. As I, th I, I still like it. I like to you know, p buy the leaders of the pack, sort of the first movers. I, I, I do like DraftKings. Just getting some news now. Uh, this is why it's a little dangerous. Not that this is really moving, but... The BAC call is on now, so they're just talking a little bit about it. It's not, it's not doing anything, but just it's a, it's a quick little move up um, right now. New AI, new AI playlist generator uh, being released now for Amazon Music participants. As you can see, Amazon stock not doing much. So I just hear that in my ear. Amazon releasing new AI playlists for its users. So I assume an AI playlist simply, Neil, listens to the stuff that, you know, pays attention to the stuff that you're listening to yep. and suggests similar music. I mean, that does not seem like a revolutionary you thing. You know who but should figure that out? 
Like, if only like, Spotify yeah, could figure yeah. that out, then they would be to the moon because Canadian that, inflation they need is to all the way it. up. What's what's our going CPI? On? Was, We're not Jimbo Slice. Our CPI was hot here in Canada. We're spending too much money, baby. Oh man, thanks, Marissa. I mean, she's just rocketing up. I left Starbucks, and then, then we won't have so much inflation. Oh man, yeah, she took my son. My son hadn't been to Starbucks in like a year, and they went yesterday. He was so happy. I um, went to Starbucks a lot. A year? Uh, no, my son doesn't go. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My my wife. We all go lots. I was gonna say, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. gone in okay. a minute. Gotcha. Wow, here goes. I mean, BAC starting to go back up to the upside right that's now. Thing, it's still like, going the, 37. The report seemed good, but it just didn't move to the call. Like that's the weird thing about earnings. Yeah, maybe we get through 38 or so today. I don't know. But BAC right now looking strong uh, and starting to go here on the conference call, starting to go Bank of America, looking to take down 37. Whatever they're saying seems to be working out. Boom goes the dynamite up through 37. BAC, we just talked about this at 3640 a couple minutes ago. Uh, now it's 37, trying to break higher here. Uh, BAC is Morgan sort of following. Again, it's the BAC call, but Morgan as well. Um, off to the races there, 87 up to 90, waiting, I guess, to have their call. It doesn't seem like it's got uh, any juice to it yet, but it's BAC right now um, starting to go with over a million and, yeah, just now, 2 million shares, looking at 37 now, Bank of America. And SoFi is absolutely sitting still. When does SoFi report? Because uh, this is another name. Oh, I got to open up my trade. Oh, here's my trade ideas down layout. Again. Here's my trade ideas layout. Look at gold. End of wow. The month. Is it the end of the month? 29th. All right. Here's SoFi. Oh, UNH. Oh, yeah. UNH was a good report, right? Yeah. Uh, we'll get to that as well as they deal with their um, uh, data breach. There it is right there. SoFi coming in. Uh, yeah. April 29th, as you said there. Current debt, $5 billion. Okay. Let's hope we don't issue more of that then, Anthony. Uh, all right, back over to the desk. A CFO is speaking right now for BAC, guys. Just be aware there's some comments uh, coming through. As you said, on the call, started at 8.30 for Bank of America. Again, Morgan's at uh, 9.30. Uh, coming up, wanted to mention this real quick. Saw a few people talking DJT. Uh, again, a weekly chart there. If you zoom in a little bit, it doesn't get much better. We are higher this morning, but huge move down in the pre-market yesterday. If you missed it, they uh, filed two offer more shares, potentially. They didn't actually come out and say they were going to. Just uh, put that out there. Yeah, tough day for them yesterday. Today, they're coming out with a different catalyst. Uh, they're announcing a video streaming service of sorts going to be released in three phases here. First phase is uh, they're going to... They're going to develop it, I guess, for the apps, the Android, iOS, and web app. Then they're going to stand. They're going to have a standalone Truth Social over-the-top streaming app. And then third phase, they want to release it for the smart TV, so you can get it right there on your couch. We'll have to see how the market digests this new headline today. Uh, just reading through some of these BAC comments. I mean, they're mostly wider macro uh, based, talking about the economy and employment, things of that nature. Nothing too significant on uh, Bank of America itself. Interesting. I mean, yesterday, with the if you're going to dilute, then DJT seemed like an easy opportunity to look for any kind of pop to show weakness. And we made that play off the 29 down to 27. And this, I mean, I don't really know. Like, what are they going to actually stream? I have no idea. So I hesitate to call it a good news story. But I might oh, not yeah. be eager to short that one today. How was the how There we go. How was the meeting? You have, you have Short. <laughs> I know I have the mic. Randy said he had a meeting today at 8. Cheers. Oh, that's why. Okay. At 8.45. So I was like, I wasn't sure if he was coming. And then I messaged him, and I was like, oh, crap, I forgot you had the meeting. He's like, all done. That was a fast one. So what were you discussing? The outage yesterday? Thanks for that, by the way. Do you know how much that cost me? Damn it. Did you talk about, you know, refunding it traders? Happens. Yeah, I know. I like that mic, though. We got the real trading on there Good now. Point. Yeah, actually, that, that wasn't that bad. We were out for 10 minutes yesterday. That's actually the first time in a while. So um, it was like a couple. I think it was one a couple of years ago, but it's tell, it's rare. Tell me something interesting. Oh, I saw all that wood that you were crushing there. That oh, was crazy. A little sore. Let me see if I can find that right now. Little, I didn't show it on that. Little uh, the back's feeling it a little bit after uh, that. Yeah, muscles that you haven't yeah. used in a while, and 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 now they're a little bit uh, tender. There we go. But, we're not as uh, young as we used to be. Yeah, there it is. Here's Randy here. Whoops. I, actually, not a picture of you though. That's the problem. No, I'm not in the picture, but. Yeah, a little wow, that, that's, these, these are not small little no, chunks. No, 
Like, so you know. If you want a good workout, it's, uh, it's. Oh, it's, I see, I see the car back over here. I see, I see it over it's there. Interesting, yeah. <laughs> it's, so what? It was good times. Yeah, how long, how long was this? Oh, that was eight or nine hours. Yeah. It would rain the whole time, but, you know. It rained Not the whole time. Nothing like a little bit of hard work, boys. Here is... Uh, when you get outside and do work, yeah, it's a it's, satisfying day. There, there's satisfying there's another day. picture right there. That's the yeah. pile we started with. It, it, was, it was good. We got the, nothing like doing some work. That's okay. We yeah, it's good. No, it's good. Fresh air. Fresh air. Yeah. Sleep well. Have a couple pops. That's right. When you're it's done, good, like the, the beer afterward, it tastes much better after a hard day's work. What was the Pay drink of choice much. that weekend? Was it some beer where you have some scotch? Oh. Some good pale ales. Pale ales. Mm. Ooh. I don't mind a good pale ale. A fancy. How's your How's Tesla? Tesla? Jesus. You, don't, you didn't actually think it was up today. No, not yet. Clearly, you didn't, uh, look, at, didn't look at Tesla. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's at 157 here, Randy. And uh, this is what it looks like on the daily chart, Randy. I mean, it is breaking uh, right now. We are getting into that level of 150 that goes back to May. So we're back into the summer lows of last year. And we're going to figure out what, what's, what's going on with this immediately. I don't know, man. I, they laid off 10% yesterday. I like the productivity angle. I'm not sure. But have you seen NIO? I mean, all of these stocks, Randy, just could do $3 now for NIO. This was, what, $15? I, I don't, wasn't it? Like back at the beginning of the year? That's No, sorry, $10 down to $3 right now. Um, our be an $8. Our beloved... Uh, Georgia plant here, Rivian, uh, not a Georgia peach. This is straight getting to the downside. This looks like a damn rotten tomato uh, over here. This was $25, Randy. I mean, I think we're seeing market saturation here to some extent, but yeah. uh, don't forget, if gas prices start to go up, and I think- Which they are, I think. They're going to, if not already. Uh, energy prices will have, I think, some effect on, on wholesale electrics and hybrids uh, going forward. So just we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. All right. Well, more to come in the EV space and uh, more to come with Randy Thanks. later on. Thank you, Randy. Uh, he chops wood and I pilot. You know, that's the, about the only Both. piloting that I will be doing. Um, you got to get the But pilot is though. not a, like, pilot is... Wow, that's a crazy life, eh? All that traveling and stuff like that to be a pilot. Yo, look, so my cousin's a pilot right. and has, and he's done every, he's done everything. Like he's done uh, commercial, he's flown, he's flown uh, cargo, uh, he's flown private jets. All the best stories come from when he was flying like rich people around, like like really rich, uh, on, on private jets. Yeah, so that the, seems like so the best. Some of the expectations life. that they have, you get put up, you get, he got put up in like great hotels and stuff. Yeah. But like you get calls, like there was some. It's it's tough for a family thing, life, I guess. Like he was in he was in Texas or something. Yeah. And he gets woken up at like two two in the morning, and basically the guy's like, "Hey, I'm trying to get a tea time at this place in Arizona. Can we need to, All right? We need like we, a, we, a, we a need, DJ. A we need to be able jet. to fly out. Can we fly out this time? And it was in a few hours. And he's like. You have to, like, there's, like, a flight plan you have to file. There's all this stuff that has yeah, to happen. Yeah, I know. And the guy's just like, no, this, has, this isn't what we're doing. Uh, make it work. So like, there's the other side of it, which is, like, unrealistic and unreasonable expectations. But then when he'd fly to Europe and he'd yeah. get put up in, like, ridiculous hotels, staying with whoever Get, get paid with. in Bitcoin. And then, he does, then he's flown cargo, with, uh, like, up into the, the north north, like... I'm talking about like, not Alaska, but like Northwest Territories and stuff. Like landing on like ice kind of not, oh, ice that's like, that's runways. Just, and, that's like, some, like I couldn't do, no. That's some Tom Cruise stuff Like right no, there. absolutely no. But um, look man, these, as Randy said, these EV names, our approach, or at least the trader's approach, to reiterate, should just be to short until, until, we, until they find some kind of a bottom. Maybe gas prices going up has some kind of effect and they get a bounce somewhere. But until that happens, the first thought should be to short them because there has not been a bottom yet. Uh, let's go back to the desk and get on with the rundown. Uh, all right, let's get into We were just talking about uh, HBO. Um, <laughs> let's get into a few things uh, we need to know here. Heading towards the open, as always, we'll kick it off with a look at the uh, overall market here. 5104, guys, that was yesterday's closing print. We're above 5100. So the fact that we're above it, 5110, <clears throat> we're printing. Let's say 
we're gonna use 5100 for support. If we give up the ghost at 5100, we're looking at 5050 here before we find any support to the high side. Let's go ahead and say 5150. That takes us back to the lows of March 6th and then in between February 23rd and February 29th. As always, if you have not done so, make sure you grab that. Very easy, go to the website. Uh, that pop-up will appear. You just enter your email address. And that comes to you every single day, right in your inbox with everything you need to know in the pre-market daily. Here is Tesla. Yeah, downside again today. This is uh, getting into that. I mean, we were talking about 150 yesterday. There it is now popping up on this chart. If you uh, start to go down far enough, uh, 160 comes and goes. Yesterday, we gapped through it, in fact, this morning. Um, if you missed it late in the day uh, on Monday, Bloomberg, I think it was the first one to come out saying, uh, these job cuts are going to be closer to 14, 15 percent. I even saw 20 being thrown around. A couple of places, Electric was another one jumping on that bandwagon. Yeah, and uh, the, the stock prices really reflected that bad sentiment. Here is uh, Musk's memo to his, uh, to his uh, employees. As we prepare the company for our next phase of growth, it is extremely important, he says, to look at every aspect of the company for cost reductions and increasing productivity. As a part of this effort, we have done a thorough view of the organization and made the difficult de decision to reduce our headcount by more than 10% globally, should be noted. Uh, Tesla reports April 23rd, and they employ about 140,000 people worldwide. Uh, just be aware, both Feds, Jefferson and Yellen, uh, speaking right now. So heads up on the overall market. Yeah, that was the key. I saw a few people, our analysts, mentioning that this morning, the global aspect of yeah. it, not necessarily just North America. Uh, it's going to be everyone affected. Yeah, keep it. Again, we have, like, speak. Having speakers going on is seemingly not moving the market much, but there is a little bit of a pullback happening. Look, Tesla just seemingly, this is a weekly chart, by the way. Uh, shout out to Trade Ideas. 150, this is 152 at the bottom. I've seen a few people in the chat put that one out there. And then there's a 150 on a trend line on the year. It does feel like we're headed toward it. If today is the day, it flat bottom broke 160 overnight like really that level got taken out without any hoopla we said at the end of the day yesterday that 160 break would be a crowded trade well one way to not make it a crowded trade is for no day traders to actually get the break so it's underneath that that just means i want to short back into that previous uh level if we break 160 to the upside i might give it a shot if it can't go red to green and if it does once, if, it's, if there's buyers above 161 and a half, which is where it closes, then this is just a failed breakdown at 160, and we can, and we can look the other direction. But until then, the first thought is going to be short until it's just wrong. You know, and that's been something that's, like, it's just worked. It's worked with Rivian. Um, not, not to big wins. It's worked on Lucid. It's worked on Nikola. Any one of these names where you just... You look for a short setup, whether it's short back into a key like pivot or resistance spot, like Rivian here bounced early at 865, and then that was resistance. So today, I would short into 865, 870. And um, yeah, like I, just, I just don't see a reason. Cuts or no cuts, the market's reaction to it wasn't bullish. Oh, I thought it should have been. Typically speaking, that's what happens, but the trend is just too big to the downside on these names. And we even talked about NEO and some of the Chinese EVs were nasty and Liado fell yesterday. So at least one of my trade ideas every single day has been one of these things to short today, like a couple of them are setting up and just a similar pattern. And when it, one day, it's just not gonna work and it's gonna be a good day for investors. I own Tesla shares, but you, know, you just gotta short them while they're, while they're weak. Um, okay, just getting the sticky note out right now. Yeah, I, I agree with all that. I have 160 written down. Just realized I was in caps lock there. Uh, for Tesla, I, you know, yesterday's close, that's going to be the big level. Like Neil said, nobody got to fade that. So we will do that now. Uh, I, I feel like we can get that move. Tesla's been really aggressive off the open, like pretty much every day uh, from what I can remember. I mean, uh, 172 up to 173.50, back down to 172. I guess that day, well, that was only 20 minutes, uh, not too much happening there. But then this day, boom, up $3 before down 10. So let's, let's get ready to rock and roll with Tesla. I mean, I really think we could also break this 156.80 to the downside. That could be problems. But for now, because I don't know what the market's going to do, it's pretty flat right here. It's trending higher, but kind of flat. Well, now we've just pulled back as I say that. But uh, 160, 
end of day, that's what I want to do. And I just said, if we can break above this 162, but now that I look at it, it's kind of like 162.50, then that maybe signals a long break. So I'm thinking about that for the long break, but you have to be patient because we could rip up into 160 immediately off open. You have to let it settle down just a little bit there. Let's see what Tesla has. The real levels in and around 160 to 162. I think you fade in there and you just hope that uh, the market doesn't decide to, to, to rally. But here it is. We, this is the rally that I was talking about. We just now broke through the 50 period, but then now we're stair-stepping higher to get back going. So looks like the market's having a resilient spot down here around 17,850. All right, let's touch on Intel here. Yet another one, as we hinted at there, um, coming out with a new chip specifically designed for uh, the Chinese market. Again, not really causing that much of a move. That's a 15-minute chart today. Uh, nicely strong yesterday until that uh, overall market move late in the day. But here we go back to uh, basically those highs on the day yesterday for Intel. So there are going to be two AI-specific chips, Brendo, here, uh, the HL328 and the HL388. Uh, they're likely going to launch in June and September, respectively. They're going to significantly reduce the performance of the chips to, ex uh, to comply with the export controls. But like you and I were talking off camera, I mean, first, China, you know, uh, shuns away Intel and AMD's chips for its telecom, citing security concerns. And now Intel is making uh, China-specific chips, like you said, though, might be a market that they just can't afford not to look at. Yeah, uh, NVIDIA and AMD coming up here in a second, but Evercore also with a note on Intel this morning. Um, to the positive side of things, going to 40 bucks with uh, their price target on INTC. Well, they waited for it to get to the trend bottom before they said they started liking it, so good thing for Evercore there. Uh, Intel, obviously it's been under a tremendous amount of pressure. You've actually had, you had a good you had a bounce yesterday. It's a good bounce because the market was so weak. It really wasn't that big of a move to the upside on Intel, but this has been like 36-ish. Zoom it out there. 36-ish has been the bottom of this trend, so it's loosely trying to get back above. Relative strength, no question about it. It wasn't until late afternoon that it really reversed trend, and even then it managed to hold most of its gains and still close higher. So you got 36.7. I even saw this in the chat. And uh, 36.7 sits out to yesterday's high you know, two days ago. And on Friday, that was like the golden short was off of that right at the open. So if it gets above there, it's probably a decent shot to make a rally. But when it gets into 37 to 37 and a quarter, I think it can run to this support turning into resistance. So I think there's room for a push through 70s that can go. It's like 1 to 1.5%. And, and then I think you're running into some resistance on Intel uh, there today. The chip, well, I guess, oh, look at that. No point going to AMD and NVIDIA because it turns out they're right after. A lot of times we'll start talking about the chips and you just lump it all into one because yeah. it's not on there in the rundown. But yeah, we can talk about the other ones uh, individually, apparently. Uh, yeah. I mean, I still think 37 and a quarter, something like that for Intel uh, to short. I mean, it's just, just in the, I, I just don't know. So what I wrote down the Sakino, it's now out, by the way, we'll talk about that in a couple minutes because we have a AMD on there, but yeah, I mean, into 37, the 200 period is 37 and a quarter. You can see what sort of, what we've been dealing with here, a nice little downside spot. I feel like this is a decent short into that area. So it's just, it could be short immediately. We just got to see what this market's going to do. There's only now, there's only 13 minutes before the market opens. So it's going to get going pretty soon. There's nothing on here yet. We have Palantir on the sticky note as well. So that should be good. Uh, we'll talk about that in a couple minutes. But for right now, um, yeah, pretty calm waters. I mean, the NASDAQ is pretty flat considering. Let's just wait to see what happens. The volatility was here yesterday. Will it come back today? In a couple minutes, we will find out. Uh, I mentioned uh, Bank of America at 9.30. I'm seeing comments right now from their CFO, so just be aware, Bank of America's call might have started at 9 o'clock, not uh, 9.30. Uh, we'll continue along here, um, touch on, yeah, AMD and NVIDIA. Uh, as I mentioned, their Evercore coming out with a very positive note. Um, Stifle as well, also I saw with a positive note on semiconductors, but um, increasing their price target, initiating coverage on uh, bow stocks at, what was it, overweight? Uh, outperform. Perform, for yeah. both, yeah. I love how they all have their own buy rating, Brendo. Each one's got to get their own unique aspect into it. Yeah, let's talk about AMD. You covered NVIDIA, AMD getting also the nod from HSBC. 
from Endless Frank Lee, uh, boosting the price target there from 180 to 225 with a, um, and boosting it from uh, a hold to a buy. Basically saying that he sees AMD being able to keep up with the supply demands for their GPU. Recall that they are competing now with Nvidia with their MI300. That's supposed to come out this year and early next year. We'll have to see how they do. So I guess a pullback has happened here for uh, chip stocks because yeah. analysts want to buy them now. So. <laughs> Feel free. So, I don't know, I'll go, like, eight, what is it, AMD? NVIDIA already bounced off 850, so, you know, like, I, I've i seen this before where you bounce off a support level like that. If you get back down there, it's not always a good thing. That's, like, $15 down, and we're much closer to previous support to resistance at 875. So when I was sort of writing the note in here, you know, I was looking for 875 for a fade. Even if that breaks, I kind of look back and say 885. It was such a big reversal on NVIDIA that even if you get some positive notes, when I'm looking at it on the higher time frame, whoops, I wanted to zoom in, not out, on that daily chart, when you look at it on the higher time frame, it actually looks like a, a consolidation lower more than anything else. You get the pullback. You've been bottoming here with about 835 to 840 as your support level, and then you had this the last couple of bounces have failed at 9.05. So I feel like if it gets through that 75.80 area, you should be getting to 9.05, and then the midway point, which is that 8.75, 8.80, is like your stopping grounds. So if we do get a, a pop at the open, I'd look for a curl on this in around that 8.75. And as, you know, as Brennan said, like it's, when, it, when all you know what break, broke loose, it was a break of support at 875 and then afternoon resistance just underneath it. Like that's where I'm getting uh, 75. But you're really close to it. So with NVIDIA, you have to be very careful because you can pop up and if you just stand in front of it on the short, it's not usually the way to get in. Like you're looking for a curl, it might happen $3 away from where you're expecting it. It happened $5 away from you're expecting it. But uh, I'm not looking uh, down here. It's up stronger than the market at this particular moment. Oh, there was one other. I should have... Uh, I will lump this one in because we don't actually have Micron on the list. But only noting, I didn't put Micron on my, on my note, but as everything was bouncing to the upside, I can't ignore the fact that Micron went down 1%. So it was a good short. I actually pivoted to this after Intel was strong and was shorting this yesterday. Well, Micron, 122. I feel like if this gets back into 122 and sets up for a short trade that I'll probably look for that uh, as well. So Micron, for now, relatively weak. I mean, it's interesting that you see a bounce in most of these chip names and not this one. I didn't want to ignore it. Yeah, we have, uh, I, I mean, we like Micron. I think all the chip names are always, pretty much always in play as, as you guys hear us talk about that. So uh, I wrote down here on the sticky note that we have AMD uh, right here, short 164. So that's going to be a level that we're going to start doing it in. I wrote down here, we're going to be in trouble if it gets too, too much above 165. So even to give it a dollar isn't that much room. I don't really want to get involved early, but I am sitting here right now at 164.50 to see if we get a bump up. So yesterday, again, I mean, what a brutal day it was um, once the market started going, that is for sure. But at the end of the day, we were still bouncing around here. I mean, the market really started to go down around noon. We never got going again. But AMD is prone to these bump ups. I wrote down as long as Nvidia can stay under 900, which it will. I mean, if it's 900, this stock will be well above 164. But the idea here is to not get above yesterday. I don't think this market is healthy enough to take out yesterday's highs. And for the chip names, that would be up here at 164.50. You're already up 1.25% right now. I don't know why. I know they were upgraded. I feel like it was upgraded just to sell again. So up here, 163.50, you could get the party started. I just wrote up here, 164.50 is where I'm sitting right now for a trade. I feel like I could probably, now that we're starting to fade out a little bit here, you know, get involved once the market opens in and around 163.50 possibly. But I just, I'm sitting here for yesterday's high because I was thinking 165 was going to be the area that I really want to just get out on. So if you're looking at a 20 minute chart, there it is right here. There's your 164.50. So I really, really like this. I feel like this is a load up level, which is why I'm sitting there with the amount of shares that I am. And then if we break through 165, then I'll tap out. Um, I was trying to think about somebody that's been tapping out lately, but 
I don't know. I didn't watch UFC this weekend, so I don't know who. Uh, but um, anyways, I, I like AMD. Wasn't the, you could have made a wrestling reference there, though. Yeah, I could have been like tapped out like you're in the chicken wing from Bob Backlund. Damn, but nobody knows about that. Maybe or should... the second you even see like the just the idea of the choke slam coming, you're just like, no, I'm no, oh, no, yeah. no, yeah, yeah. no. Yeah, you could tap out. You, get the, the... you tap out before. Taker gets that look in his eyes, just like, no, 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 I'm oh, tapping out man. right there. But yeah, the cross face uh, chicken wing. I know Sharif knows about Sharif. that one. Yeah, then uh, Bob Backlund. That, that guy was old when, when he even came no, into the saying, WWE. Like, he was old when we were young. Shout out to Bob Backlund, anyways. Uh, yeah, AMD earnings, I think, in two weeks, honestly. So this is going to be uh, super, super exciting. Let me just double check for everybody. Uh, also, what, end of the month. Oh, okay, yeah. So, yeah, a couple weeks, man. They're all just getting rolled out. AMD is going to be going to be a jam, that's for sure. All right, we'll go on to uh, DJT here. Um, upside, as we said early on this morning. Uh, positive headline, um, new product, products, I guess, multiple coming out. One and a half percent here into a uh, market that is uh, kind of struggling right at the moment. But huge, huge, huge day down yesterday, if you missed it, um, after they filed to possibly offer more shares. Not necessarily an offering, but uh, the possibility of. And one really wonder is exactly how this is going to differentiate itself from like the likes of Rumble or or other aspects as well. Because we know like, you know, there aren't too many people using Truth Social right now. That could change it come November. Um, so we'll have to continue to wait and see. But like I mentioned earlier in the show, they're, they're looking at releasing it in three phases. The first phase here is going to be for the app. Uh, in the true social app itself. Phase two is going to be its own standalone streaming app. And phase three is going to make uh, an app for your smart TV so that you can stream it on the couch there. Uh, it sat here in front of 26 yesterday. Uh, it was definitely someone buying it um, all day long, guys, late in the day. But uh, we'll see if that holds again today. I like this in the chat. This is a good quote, uh, Ben Ruggiano. Uh, to be a master, first you must be a fool. And you should never be afraid to be a fool. I, I admit what you don't know. Like in... Uh, no, that's what it's all about here. And my first thought when I sat down for DJT was, and I saw the news, was like, um, social media? Okay, good luck with that. Why not just have a short back into the same level? And I was just going to say short, short back into the 30, like starting at that 29 like yesterday. And I probably, look, if it does make a move up, I'll probably look for an opportunity to short it, and I might pay for some locates. But this is a stock that can go a little bit squeezish on you. So I'd almost want it to, like, show me that the trend is still down. Like, I'm going to really wait for some kind of a rejection. Because even if yesterday you got the lower high, I think you were absolutely fine. So I might just sit this one out uh, a little bit today and not try to, not try to find it. Like, this one, I, was, I had a level two up and was waiting for it to go higher, to fade, because, of, because it did have the dilution news. But, you know, today, with a bit of a different headline, even if I don't necessarily believe in uh, that they can make that work, it's still the kind of thing that could squeeze because of that low float. So I'll be pretty cautious, maybe come back to this at 10 o'clock. So this morning, um, my daughter woke up at 5.30 and was on the ice, and then I went to see her around 7.30 on the ice as well. And then I just get this tweet uh, or Instagram post from my, uh, from my wife, my wife, and uh, at Trader TV, Sean, go find me right here. And this is what she's doing now. We're getting in baseball. Last night, I didn't get home till 9 o'clock. We were at rep meetings. Um, tomorrow night, same kind of thing. And then here she is right now seeing, obviously, that's the New York Yankees losing last night uh, to the Toronto Blue Jays, 3-1. Uh, so shout out to the Jays and shout out to uh, my gorgeous family. And, um, and you'll note there, there she is. Yeah, sorry. Oops, yeah. In the picture, yep. you'll note that you saw the number 42. Yes, team. that was yesterday. Because yesterday's Jackie Robinson. I tweet something out about it. But you got to beat the, the Yankees have to lose on Jackie Robinson Day. It's very important that the Yankees lose on Jackie Robinson Day. On every day. day, maybe. Well, maybe not. Well, yes, the Yankees, as a Jays fan, they need to lose every single day. But, you know, last I checked, you know, Jackie Robinson's for, for playing, obviously, he's most famous for breaking the color barrier, but um, his most famous play was stealing home, and Yogi Berra of the Yankees still thinks that he got him out, but he didn't. Uh, so uh, shout-out to the Blue Jays for winning. That's fantastic. You gotta, one of the coolest things about when you're young playing sports is getting, to, getting that chance to like, see your heroes, emulate them. Like, I used to copy stances, I'm sure. She's into that as well. Oh, oh I yeah. forgot. I mean, I couldn't find that ladder. I know oh, you okay, yeah, yeah. I, need, I, need I was looking for it, but I didn't have enough time to find it. 
It's on doing it's coaching. Good. I have one of those like sprint ladders you can use for a practicing running technique. And I was like, oh, I have one that I'm not using. I'll give it to you so you can coach. I have and one. then I couldn't find it in our storage room of death. I just have to give a look on the weekend or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's okay. Um, yeah, I'm already getting some texts about that. Uh, yeah, she's just... Uh, my wife's just watching. She's telling me right now she's just watching all these sports highlights, which is amazing. Okay, so D DJT, um, it's going to $10 probably. I mean, we talked about where the SPAC price is. This was DWAC. We know that. Um, again, good trading tool. I just feel that you're going to want to just keep watching out for this. I know Neil was trading a little bit yesterday. That $28 seems to have been a good little area there. If you're looking for a possible short into that, 30 looks like a great break long, as I could see some people averaging into the short there, then getting squeezed out a little bit, only 39 million shares. It does look like it's coming into a bottom. I mean, we can talk politics, we, anything on this show, it doesn't matter. It's just, this is, in my opinion, something that you're just gonna wait for. Probably as the election comes through, it'll be even more exciting to trade. Um, you know, highly volatile name, definitely traded there on Reddit looked at in the options market, DJT, um, another good one. And then we didn't even have Reddit on there, but Reddit, I thought, was it below 40 bucks? Yeah, so we're right here, right at $40 again for Reddit. This name, I mean, we talked about this with Danielle Shea as well. Wait, wait before you get into anything. I mean, it, we've seen IPOs, man, IPOs and SPACs. There's not many of them. We, we can always talk about ARM, and I think Birkenstock was higher, and there's going to be a couple of them. But many of these IPOs have a very, very similar pattern where we rip and then we tank, and right now it's in tank mode. Uh, let's go over, before I sneeze, over to the desk and figure out what's up with some of these bank earnings. Uh, out the highs right now for Morgan Stanley, up 4.2%. Nice look for MS this morning. Just be aware. Uh, Bank of America, the call is still on right now. Still some comments coming through, but um, positive uh, nevertheless to the tune of about 2% right now. So looking a little bit better here. They're trying to talk it up a little bit on this uh, earnings call for BAC. Yeah, BAC did well, Brendo, here. They did better than expected on net interest income as well as investment banking. Net interest income, essentially how much interest they pay out um, on the high interest um, savings versus how much they get in ver on uh, loans. So they did well there. Morgan Stanley did really well in wealth management, trading and investment banking, all exceeding expectations there. Uh, earnings for Morgan Stanley, 14% year over year increase on the quarter. Revenue rose 4%. Similarly for a Bank of America profit though, uh, even though beat expectations, uh, they dropped 18% and revenue also slipped about 1.6. But beating expectations. Yeah, still going here. Uh, just took out the highs again, guys, for MS right now. Yeah, we sort of touched on Morgan Stanley that those mid-90s, 90, 95 been a huge level on the daily, so I think if it gets into there, you play some resistance. But BAC, like, it didn't even move until the call happened. And when you look at it, now I'm going to maybe even adjust the plans because sometimes I like the stink bit idea. And you got the 50 period at 35 and a half. You have support there on the daily at that price. You already have a wick down. So if it does like a dip down and then holds the low, I want to see if I can play off of that. So right now it's at 36, good volume. Obviously, if it makes a fresh low, I would just quickly uh, get out of it. I feel like you said something about, we only have three minutes to the open. Uh, Apple just made a bit of a move down there. I didn't notice anything Did on it? the balance located. It's a bit early, but Apple starting to fall when about a buck in the last 15 minutes or so. And not that crazy of a move in the general, but it gave up big support yesterday at that 173 and a half. So uh, I didn't have this on my note. Suddenly, like I was, like 173 and a half was support. You'd think that would turn into resistance. But if there is a pop in Apple, I think it might be worth fading, uh, seeing the sellers already start to come into this name. 170, I didn't think would come into play. So I didn't even bother writing that one down. But yeah, 170 is a bit of a level on Apple. I guess we do have a chance of getting there. Yeah, for more, um, for more highlights here, I, I wrote it down here. Um, there's the picture. I wrote it down here, BAC short fade into 38. Um, when I wrote that, we were talking about BAC, and it was up at 37 and starting to go higher. It's now came way back in. So I don't think we get to 38. The reason why we talk about 38 is because it's been these highs on earnings day. Take advantage of a possible pop. I thought we would get there. It doesn't look like it. So I think you could change your price now to 37 
short uh, on BAC. So I just put in a stop order to go to go short on Tesla if we break that 156.50 with a stop in and around like 157.20 uh, or so on that break higher right there if, if we do break higher. So we'll be in probably Tesla pretty early. The one name that we didn't talk about that's on the sticky note as well is Palantir. I like the fade in this name. I mean, honestly, um, yesterday we nailed the call early about it getting to the upside. We had written down this 2325, I believe yesterday it didn't get there. So we didn't take the long, I wanted a long break, but instead it just faded the rest of the day. Um, this is a great stock to trade because this is 10 plus percent. Um, like 23, I mean, where, where it closed, down here at 21, $2 almost, so about 7%, sorry, um, down yesterday. A lot of opportunity in Palantir, especially if you do get an early pop. So we'll wait for that one. And the uh, price that I wrote down was 2250 for Palantir. So I do have an order there as well. And we do have a Tesla fade order up near 160 and then a punch the bottom at 156.50, which probably hits, Neil, uh, almost immediately as might. those imbalances are out. Uh, right now, Palantir sell. I'm just trying to do this really quickly, only 30 seconds. There's really no big names on there, so let's wait for Tesla coming through. Early trade, but early out also if it doesn't work. Yeah, got to watch out. It is Tuesday. We have some Fed speakers a little bit later on, but uh, the big story, some bank earnings, the pressure we had yesterday, keep your ear to the ground, geopolitical news as, all, as well. But in three, two, and one, let's ring it, Adara. All right, let's go. go. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Tesla looks like it. Oh, I, whoa, I have a lot of stickies. It did break. Oh, did it I have break? A, I have stickies Oh, there it is. Well. Okay, yeah, it, now it's cleared up. Uh, that absolutely did break to the downside. Oh, that was wild. Yeah, did we're pretty filled? huge already. Yeah, we're already, uh, we did really well there, guys, honestly. We got 156.40 there on the breakdown. We got a bunch of covers uh, in the 80s, but here it comes right back up. So, you know, what was good um, could not be good at some point. Take another piece out here at 156. There it is. Now let's hit some downside. But for right now, it's a pretty volatile trade here. Uh, with There it is, with TSLA. We're just trying to get some out here. But so far, this is the short. I do have the stop in at that 157.30. So let's see what happens with Tesla in early flood. Uh, right there so shout out it's a money maker it's Tesla flush gang what's up uh, nice move to the downside let's see what happens here 155 bidding I did get Rivian oh Coinbase is getting right down there uh, whoa coins already at 219 okay uh, let's flash on quickly that coin is okay. really flushing down we said that 216 was the daily level in the trend oh it got to 17 and we missed it all right, I was waiting at 216. That was the level on the daily. We did miss that opportunity on Coinbase, but I mean, it's a dollar away, so it doesn't really matter. Rivian came right in to the pre-market high and did exactly the thing that it's been doing every single day, which is flush at the open. So another flush at the open. Neo, I was gonna double check that one to see what happened over there. Uh, no, Neil's not really moving, so not much of an opportunity to fade that one right away at the open. But uh, big move down in Rivian and Coin. Those are two that I was watching. It looks to me like Intel, which we did want. There goes if it Tesla. Could have, yeah, forget about it. It's already back into the downside. Uh, so I will cancel on Intel. Intel just flushed a percent at the open. See, there's not always a pop that you can fade. Uh, no, Tesla just insane. popped up too. Yeah, Tesla just popped up too. But then yeah, Rivian's coming back. Yeah, Tesla just rejected 158. So I'm wondering if we're okay. We're in it again at 40s, um, trying to get. So that's we only got half out. Tesla's basically a flat trade uh, for us. Okay, there it comes uh, as it's now. It's coming back in. All right. So let's see how low we can get now. We'll see if we can get a dollar back. We're short at 157.40. We'll bid down again at 156. Only trade we're in right now is Tesla. But we did get stopped out, but then got right back in. It's moving a hell of a lot, man. Watch out for this NASDAQ starting to go. We're in Tesla right now. We're pretty calm with it. We're in the money 60 cents, trying to see uh, where we can go. But here it goes right back up to the upside. Um, I'm looking at this level now, the 200 period of 158.50. I know we wrote down 160 to be patient with it, but 
we're not being that patient, are we? So now here we go. Nice upside push here for Tesla again. I just want to use this area then. One, if it broke the bottom, we're able to get shares almost immediately out on the bottom. Now we have to play the fade game. Coming back. Yeah, to bring it back a little bit. So I still like Tesla as right now this is the show of EVs as we're in Rivian. Yeah. Tesla. I mean, Rivian also gave a pop. It faded off of the, it didn't quite get to 850. So the first short we had off the pre-market high here at 40s and we're in at 36 and 38 and we got filled. Like the best fill was actually AMD down rate. in the 30s. It got to 26, and I didn't have a bid out. And it just came back up to the 50 level, Check that, obviously it came to 46. Short on the way back at 43, now you're seeing it flush back into those lows. Oh yeah, Peloton was the other one. I put oh, on my note, yeah, I wanted I to short any pops on that. Uh, no pops in Peloton to be faded uh, whatsoever. I know there's a small cat, Pally, making some moves, but uh, we'll cross that bridge uh, when things slow down. Coin bounced all the way from 17 to 221. Ugh. So I missed a bid, but it didn't quite get down to the level of 216 that we liked. So it happens, you're not always gonna get the trade uh, that you want. Apple is bouncing. So Apple making a strong move off the lows. If it gets to 173, that's the area that I want to be fading into 173 and a half. So Apple's starting to get back into the upside. All right, we've got it going right now, guys. We are now $1.50 in the money on Tesla um, as that's back in right now. And we begin a new position on advanced micro devices. So um, we're gonna, we wrote down 164. We talked about waiting around at that level for it, but there it is. We're short at 27. We'll just take a piece out at 163. We'll take 20 cents. Here we go. Bring the pain. It's now $2 in the money for Tesla as that's starting to go to the downside right now. So let's see how far that one can go. Um, and then we will wait for AMD. Wow, we were just at, what were we just at right there? I was just at 59. It bounced off 60. That's, that's ridiculous. Uh, right there for AMD, but that's what happens. When you put orders out, you, you kind of put yourself, you know, you sort, sort of show, tip your hand a little bit, and sometimes they will run away from those orders, but we, I can't believe we just missed that, honestly. That's crazy, but okay. Uh, now let's see what happens. We're going to wait for 164. Uh, maybe a little bit of... Uh, Baba broke 70. I was going to say a temperate... Yeah, I know Baba broke 70. I'm probably going to add to that position. Um, but okay, so NVIDIA... I wrote down 875 was going to be an area for, for some kind of concern for NVIDIA. Brendan talked about us losing some of that data there yesterday. Uh, but there's 875 coming for NVIDIA. So that's going to be a level to look at for me there. But for right now, it's $3 in the money. We are absolutely crashing right now on Tesla as there it goes, man. Wow, I can't believe we got stopped out of a position there. Uh, but that's okay, we're back in it. Now Tesla's really rocking. And oh yeah, by the way, AMD, you can get into the gates of hell as well as both these names are the top two names here on the sticky note today. And that's what we're pumping right now. Nice trading here on the desk so far uh, down to 162 goes AMD. We're short at 163.30, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, Adara? Alice Bio now up over 120%, announcing the evalu completion of this evaluation of its Pali 2108 treatment for ulcerative colitis. They also have a small float to keep in mind, 836,000 shares. So small float and positive treatment news for PALI. The high of the day is 163. Well, I have no idea why SMCI is flying right now. Uh, we'll keep our ear to the ground. I have no clue. You're about to break lows on DJT here. It's about to get under that $25. Well, it might get under that $25. But I want to quickly go to Alibaba. It broke that 70. We did miss a breakdown trade on this one. If it does come back up, we'll try to fade it back into 70. If you look at the daily chart, you'll know exactly what I mean by flat bottom break on Alibaba. As long as it's underneath that price, I want to grab that one to the south side. SMCI might be going up, but NVIDIA, look, I liked NVIDIA at 75. NVIDIA got to 70 and then pulled back. So I guess we're going to have to be patient with this one. Still just in Rivian. It's working underneath its lows. Uh, Coinbase will have to back off of. I don't want to be sitting on the bid when I probably missed. I missed that dip buy down there off the 50 period on the daily. Looks like it already made its move. I mean, SNCI upgrade, that's enough for it to be bucking the trend of the market. That doesn't feel that likely to me. Like, that feels 
That feels pretty weak. Micron is through lows as Dude, well. Don't even know. As it's getting nasty, nasty, nasty. Oh god. It's all red here, guys. All red. Damn! What is even going on? The, this number one idea here on the sticky note is AMD short 164. The high of the day is 163.89. This is three dollar. It's going. It's not three dollars. Tesla is now three dollars, which is trade idea number two on here. So there we go, man. Tesla three dollar winner. It's a hot dog kind of a day as AMD is one dollar if you're not here to make money exit door left oh, I, I mean whatever door you want the right one or the left one uh, but here we go man this is a opportunity today that is for damn sure you never know uh, what's going to hit but we knew that AMD was gonna hit it hit to the downside and it's a banger so we'll get a uh, one more piece uh, down here as we're trying to bounce a little bit we said that AMD would be one of those names that we'd want to take advantage of if this did come through for the market. But look what's happening to Tesla. Uh, we had Randy on, we talked all about that one. It is your trade idea, um, again, of the day, I feel like this short on Tesla. There it goes, we shorted it early, we did get stopped out, we're back in it. As we go breaking now, now 350 in the money. Let's go and find another one. All right, for everybody. Another so one. we're gonna do that, uh, look for some more. What's up with Palantir uh, right now? 2150 trying to battle back as well so so far so damn good um and that's what we're all about here at trader tv live hit the like hit the subscribe hit the share let's get going we are back one more time i tell you every day man i'm coming back here to put these this damage on the market so let's say what's up to neil and the Rivian shorts. Uh, well, Rivian's doing the same thing, except it's bouncing right now off of its low. So it just broke the low of the day and wicked it. Uh, I wanna point out some strength in the market right now because I'm gonna be patient. If nothing came to levels to short, then I don't wanna be shorting bottoms. Not gonna happen. Meta's held $500 here, which bucking the early trend feels like it can be good. It's already bouncing off the 50 period moving average here. So if this starts holding out, and showing bids above 502. I think this one has a chance at a relief rally as we're going to uh, Dara. Okay, we have another small cut moving around here. This one is a penny stock, JAGX. Had a nice little run the last few days, currently up almost 30% after announcing FDA approval and licensing for its oral mucositis treatment. And they're planning to launch the treatment in Q3 2024. They also have a short float of about 8.4%. So JAGX on watch, guys. Jag X is what we usually call that one, just to keep it simple. Uh, DJT, if you're for those paying attention, yeah, it just broke to twenty-five dollars. This is the case of, well, you could have just done what you did yesterday, but yesterday it did give a bounce that you could fade back into. So that's what I will look for. Some kind of a bounce. Maybe you get back into twenty-six, something along those lines. Peloton's exactly the same thing. Uh, cancel offer as it just immediately flushes to the downside. I think you're just looking to short pops. Rivian, we were able to get another fill. It's still a tight range on Rivian with an 846 high and like an 825-ish uh, bottom there. So it's only about 20 cents worth of range. It's an $8 stock. But if it's going to be inside, then I want to make sure we're waiting for the top to get back into that one. Everything just immediately flushed at the open, including Intel for like one and a half points into the downside. Still looking for the first available bounce. We'll, we'll have to talk VWAP, pre-market lows. That's where I want to be able to get into these. Jimmy Jan saying DJT to Jam. zero. I don't know. But we're just here to trade the price action. If it goes to zero, well, it uh, it's, go it's, lower. Not, it's not happening today. But if you're looking for a trade, I'm just looking for the next pop. And that's exactly how we got into it yesterday. We didn't have it on the, the early pre-market flush. We got it when it made a bit of a bounce and then the curl. So I still think that setup is going to be in there. Okay, we're, um, we're getting a little greedy here because AMD keeps popping into the teens and we're not taking it, although we're short at 40 here. It's starting to go a little bit. Um, so a little nervous on that because we did clean it out there at the bottom. We still held about 30% back to the upside. So we are like reloading this a little bit here. Uh, so let's just wait to see what happens now. So there we go. We get an out there at 16s. Um, now it's starting to fade again. The, the one thing is starting to go back up. Hopefully it fades back through 163. We're still waiting for 164. I was looking at what you might have heard me say 156. I mean that I'm not going to get out, but... This is not a horrible spot there as we saw Tesla get absolutely flushed uh, down there. I don't know, like that might've just been, 
I thought that was going to start something into 150. So let's be a little patient with it. Well, here's VWAP. Yeah, see if we can get that into 150. I still think it's possible uh, to get that trade. So we'll just wait for it for now. But so far, so good here as the market's coming back in for us. AMD, a nice move back in. So we like that trade. Uh, but so far, so good here um, as we'll just kind of wait to see if this market flushes. I mean, yesterday we got out too early. We saw, yesterday we had AMD 164. It went down to like, one or 168, I don't remember what we had, but we had something real good early. And the next thing I knew I blinked um, and we were out because it was a big winner and then it started to tank in. So let's wait to see if AMD gets us that trade. If not, we can get stopped out, but let's be here to see if we can get a bigger win. So um, AMD right now trying to support that. There's Tesla, it bounced off that 156. Could have been a reload area, and maybe we should have done that, actually, with the market still at VWAP. Let's still hold on to these shorts and believe in this, this trade, okay? So we're still short AMD. I have bids here at 162.75. Let's get a break here. I could take it all out right now, but we're not going to do that. And there's the believe in Until Tesla. What? Go ahead. Yeah, do we have a number at 945? Uh, so, look, I, I had to wait for VWAP, which early on is also pre-market lows on Tesla to get in. I wanted 160 as a resistance, so... You know, you just take the stair steps down. I'm now short underneath 156, but Intel just broke $36 even. Nice. Oh my goodness. And so, again, I'm trying to resist the temptation. Do not want to be shorting bottoms. Absolutely do not there want to be go. shorting the absolute oh, low. Oh, bounced again. But uh, if we get a reload, it's a reload. We haven't even got into it. If we do get a pop, VWAP now sits at 36 and a quarter. Uh, NVIDIA, it still won't get to 875, so it might not be headed up and showing that much strength. And if you're looking for relative weakness, which I am, I just know, like, Intel at the lows, uh, Micron at the lows. NVIDIA is a little bit stronger, so I'm posting on over to Micron uh, because that's one's holding a stair-step down pattern. So we're in a Tesla for the first time, still in Rivian, looking to short the pop into 120 on Micron. Just noting that NVIDIA doesn't seem to want to retest these lows like everything else that I'm looking at in the chip space. A firm under 30? Wow. Is it? Yeah, oh. Wow, that's, that's a nightmare, that stock. Um, okay, so we'll take advantage of AMD again. It just keeps on bouncing off 163, and then I'm just, honestly, I'm kind of playing the P&L game here a little bit. It just keeps on bouncing there, and then I get scared when it does this. I actually have some bad news for everybody. I don't think the chips are a short. So... I have to switch the game plan here no, because, uh, well, Intel's not. Well, Micron's weak. Intel's too. a completely different. Is it? Okay, well, the chip names I'm looking at for sure are not a short uh, because here we go. AMD up to that 164. So this is the level that, here we go. Like, look at this. So I said this wasn't a short about 40 cents, 50 cents ago, 60 cents ago, 80 cents ago, it seems like. But um, we'll take a shot here at 164 as we're just going to look and figure out what we were talking about. So there's the last position for us. We're short now at 66 because it got going. All right, well, let me take a bid here if we can get it as it just came back into our price. Here we go. All right, so now we've taken some pressure off. You see where we're short. We wrote down 164 on the sticky note. So there, oh my God, Neil, what exactly? Nice move to pull back in here for AMD. Um, good move. There it is. We wrote down 164 on here. We'll take it. We'll support it. Uh, but at the same time, might be worth ringing some Reggies here. Uh, there it comes. Pull it back. Let's go, baby. Now we're 50 cents in the money. We're at the highest spot we've been at all damn day right now. So it's cooking up some profits. $2 on Tesla. Now 50 cents, 60 cents on AMD and again this is what it's all about we talk about preparation you know have your levels and ring the damn register hit the like button hit the subscribe button hit the sirens hopefully that siren doesn't go off behind Sergey Samson off too much here we go right now now we're really cracking in it is a chicken dinner winner ladies and gentlemen now a dollar 20 back in for AMD and we just put that one on that is sticky note nation I don't know where the sticky note is but you guys know where it is at Trader TV Sean it's all over the place it's the good good and it's a Dara. Cartoon Studios, T-O-O-N on the Amex, trying to gain volume here right now, up about 15%, with an NVIDIA-related headline here, actually. They developed their integrated AI toolkit, Gadget AI, using the NVIDIA Omniverse. They also have a short float of about 6.7%, so T-O-O-N with an AI headline on watch, guys. Yeah. Oh, I missed that story. Um, I was just saying to oh, Sharif, what oh, else are we supposed to do? There. Trading and entertaining? Hopefully you guys are uh, enjoying this. But again, stick to your guns, right? I mean, it went 
We didn't short this name until it got to our level. So boom goes the dynamite right there. And I still don't really think it's a short. Like other names are probably tanking here um, as this market is really giving it up. So man, oh man, uh, what oh, a day again, break man. The, the only thing that's going to stop me is system outages. I think we proved that yesterday. So let's just see what happens right now. Down in the money now, $2 on Tesla. Yeah, Tesla working. I mean, everything is now starting to roll over. By the way, coin did break that 215 level. And um, I'll show you in a second after I hopefully get Mara. Mara also breaking support. I'm trying to pick this one up underneath 14 and a half. But remember Coinbase? As I was getting into Tesla for the first time, Coinbase broke 215. So the 216 bounce happened at 217. And we missed that chance and it bounced $5. It broke 215 and tanked $5 immediately through. So if we pop back up, I do want it. I went over and said, can we grab Mara, which is breaking a support level as well? The answer was yes. So Mara underneath support on the daily chart at about 14 and a half. Uh, so we're short Mara, short Micron, Rivian. Uh, the stock that was strong in the chip space is, not was, check that, is, is SMCI. And there's a good part of me that says if the market takes out the lows, what difference should it make that these guys get an upgrade? Um, for sure, 9.30, 9.35, we're doing some work here. That was a good level both yesterday and back in the past. So if we get up there, I think it's a bit of a fade. But uh, we're already in four other things. And I do feel like it's going to be something nasty. Peloton has not broken three yet. So we're watching for that one on the even dollar. Micron's about 40 cents in the money. We had to pick it up on a failure at VWAP. I think we can easily see a test of 118, but the support level is down at 117 change on Micron as even the strongest are starting to fall. Adara? Interesting one here, intracellular therapies, ITCI. This one actually not a small cap. It is it has a market cap of about 6.5 million, or sorry, billion dollars, but they are up about 24% on some positive phase three data for their major depressive disorder treatment. So keep an eye on ITCI, guys, up about 24%. I see you, ITCI. Um, hmm. Getting out of Tesla would have been wrong before, but I'm wondering now, I mean, the market is trying to bounce back upside a little bit here. Pretty, pretty nice. We, we only have 10% left of AMD. Um, this was amazing. Like the fact that it came back into this level, I couldn't believe. Um, and then we're able to get the other levels uh, down there at VWAP and then at the 50 period and at 162, uh, 50. So that was a good trade for us. Um, we, we emptied it out. So the clip is now emptied on AMD. And I'm debating the reload, to be honest with you. I might just wait until we get in and around that 164.50 um, for that reload. So I'm going to try to be patient with this and just hold it, man. Hold it like sort of close to the vest here and see if we can get something rocking and rolling here um, with that trade. So that's what I'm going to be doing, waiting around for AMD. Get upside a little bit more. Debating. We only have two trades on today, man. And honestly, oh, and by the way, uh, shout out because look what's happening to BAC. Uh, we wrote down short on this name, it's just, we didn't, we didn't take it. It's, we were talking about these banks starting to get to the downside a little bit here. Um, and that's what started to happen. I, I wrote down 38, it's so stupid, I changed it to 37. We didn't really get there, right off open. I mean, the best short you could have had was basically a 40, maybe a break 25, something like that, a break of the VWAP down to the downside. But great trade there for anybody that has Bank of America because that is a great short uh, coming back in right there. So good job there. Um, that is the bank names. We can always have a quick look at our oh, friend right Morgan, there. but right now uh, it is downside as we're trying to get to the lows of the day here on Tesla. And man, oh man, do we have this one, man. This is a diamond hand gang right now. $3 in the money on Tesla, a dollar in the money on AMD. This is what we do over on this side, guys. Yeah, I'm gonna jump right back into Rivian. Our third trade short on Rivian took out the top and then flushed right back in. So this level is still looking fantastic. Because we had multiple shorts on it, obviously it's gonna still be good, but uh, I feel like they just tried to rinse me out of that one and we'll try to get back in underneath the 850 level. Uh, Mara, which we just put on. Tesla, like I'm looking at low of the day on Tesla and then VWAP or Trace for another refill on that one. But Mara holding underneath VWAP in its own right. Want to make sure we're respecting the flush uh, that's happening in some of the Coinbase oh, yes. related names. Uh, sorry, crypto related names, Coinbase related names. Coinbase is starting to head back to the upside. I do want to short underneath VWAP, but I'll have to wait very patiently. 
Tesla, as I said, didn't set up anything right away at the open, at least not for myself. Wow, but if dude. it flushes back into the low, I'm just going to take my one and done VWAP or trace all the way back into the bottom. Tesla might be headed to 100. We'll see. Uh, I don't know about that in the chat. Uh, not today, to be sure. Still nothing for me in Peloton. It's not really breaking down that. just yet. And then DJT was the only one that we haven't traded uh, as well, or at least haven't really talked about enough. It broke that 25 level. There has not even been a bounce to fade on uh, DJT, down 8% already. But it's not all bad. Apple, about to take out the high. Check that. Apple has taken out the high of the day on a march to that 173 and a half. I still feel like that area is a fade. It was big resistance at about 173 and a half to 174 um, in the afternoon trade yesterday. Well, the, like after, look, after we had that turn on the geopolitical news, I mean, everything changed. And 173 and a half to 174 with resistance. I think it's still a short up there. Oh, man. Um... Wow, we're getting, I'm getting a little anxious here because uh, we got we to figure this out. Um, the market right now uh, made that move higher. I'd like to short something. So I feel like that's the right play. We just got to find the right instrument uh, to short right now. Uh, I'm in Tesla. I don't want to short at these levels. So we got to find something else that we can put some damage on. GME, I was surprised when Brendan... Didn't Brendan say nine bucks? Yeah, 10 bucks yep. right now for GME. So when he mentioned that, I was like, what? Say what? I mean, maybe it wasn't exactly what? like that, but I was like something like that. Uh, down to 10 bucks right now. Like that name is getting absolutely destroyed. This could be a good short. I don't know if we have to go in and pay for that, but we've already broken it down to 994. So I'd almost wait for that 994 to break one more time. And then if that happened, then I think it's, um, you know, all aboard. And then you can use your $10 level as you're out. So. I think a 994, let's work on that idea and think if we can get away with it. 994 short if that does break for GameStop. So that's going to be something that I'm going to look at on that side of things as well. Dollar Club member with AMD um, and $3 plus with Tesla. But the Tesla trade, uh -uh. Uh, we want to wait to see if there is a bottom here. We don't, do, we don't put in this work just to scalp this out right now. Let's just see. Um, you, you can see where we're going on the stock. I mean, that's, that's the point. It's going to the downside. So let's just see if that is where it wants to continue to get in. I mean, that level of 152, isn't that what that level that we're talking about is right here? Yeah, 152. It's basically 152, 151.90 or so is that bottom. So I want to see if we can get there. Right now it's $4 in the money, and I don't have any plans of getting out of it. So uh, we'll hold on to it. It's just a piece. But Tesla right now is starting to make it work, and so is AMD, which is the number one stock for me. Yeah, I just took, my, took Tesla out in front of that bottom at 154, put in a bit of a bounce. But I'll go back to VWAP. I don't see any reason to get away from... Uh, shorting the pops, right? If the trend is to the downside, you want to short the pops. I'm just watching over NVIDIA here. Like NVIDIA is making another run at the highs. You have a one tick at 870. It broke 870, came back. It broke 870, came back again. I just feel like if it makes a fresh high, NVIDIA is going to do one of those like mini squeezes. And because it's not at 875 yet, like that would be 870.50 on a break. I think that's a scalp trade. Because if the market reverses, we've seen NVIDIA do this. Even when it's a good short, if you get one of those like flat top breaks early where it does a dip and then rip, that, usual, that first long, as it does the consolidation break, is always a good one. I had it yesterday and it worked. So I'm going to do the same thing here. It's 870.50. I think that gives you an easy out if it can't hold on to the 70 even. But it's a bit of a difference uh, on the morning because I haven't really been looking for any chip longs. Money chip longs, eh? Okay. Uh, I'm just looking at the scanner to see if we could find something. Let's check. Let's check the temperature of Disney. How about that? Uh, all right, let's check the temperature of Disney. Um, the market's starting to go to the upside here. So, like, honestly, um, good, good out maybe for Neil there at that bottom. But Tesla's not really going up with this market move. So that's making me more convinced about this short right now. Uh, but I just said let's check the temperature of Disney. So let's do that. Because yesterday, yeah, I was going to say yesterday was pretty beat up. But look where we're, we, we saw this on the market recap show. Uh, Disney 113 is the 50 period moving average. So we're right there right now. Um, so that's, that's something that's pretty interesting to me, looking at where we are for Disney uh, down into that level. A name that we had looked at before, 
which was on our upgrades and downgrades board, shout out to Adara who had this for us, was DraftKings. So, um, oh, right, right, the 50 period. Yeah, exactly. So we'll, we'll, see, we'll see if DraftKings wants to do anything here. Uh, but right now, as Neil yeah. mentioned, we are uh, in a level. We did get up, we're up, still up 1.5%. So maybe there is something here for DraftKings. But for right now, um, I like the short if we can get back up here, but 44.80, it just bounced off 44. So just be careful there uh, with DKNG. It's looking good. I'm, I'm fine with it. But for right now, uh, dancing around. I just want to kind of- Video broke. Uh, oh. It broke that 8.70 okay, and a half. Good. I just grabbed it there on the break trade. And again, this has just worked for a scalp trade a couple of days in a row. So I'm gonna, well, I shouldn't say a couple of days in a row because it didn't on Friday. But it, it just broke like a triple top and it wasn't 8.70 even but my stop's immediately in at the even dollar and I'm playing to 875. I, like I came in thinking this stock was a short at 875 and if it's not a short at 875, then it's at least a get out of the long at 875. And I, I'm gonna stick to that one. But the downside is Micron's about to take out its local high. So we'll give a little bit back on Micron. Uh-oh, it's got back into Rivian as well. Uh, we'll give a little bit back on Micron if that does take out the high, but the scalp trade on NVIDIA is on in that 875 level. Give me, give me, give me. It's just breaking. Why do I always put orders at 44 in front of 50? I always Daryl Straub. Not NVIDIA should be okay. I know, but I, know, but I always, it's weird. I always Daryl Straub. If I'm getting in front of a 50 level and I just cancel it and I'm just going to punch when it comes back, no, but it's weird. If, yeah. I'm, if I'm offering in front of evens, I offer 88. And if I'm offering in front of 50s, I offer 44. Uh, what did NVIDIA do just there? You know, NVIDIA just broke a flat top there at 870. Oh, at and 70. I took the long off oh, of that wow. oh, yeah. into 874. But I thought 75 was going to be a short Look at, the mark. at this level, so I'm going to get out of it. That's unfortunate. Um, what happened to coin? I just got short in coin and... Oh, I tried to oh, short I know that what I did. level. Oh, oh, I, know. I, I had a stop already out on coin, so I did that thing where I got in and the old stop... That's silly. I just got in and out of coin for absolutely no good reason there. But it's at VWAP, so maybe I should just wait for it to come back in. But you shouldn't be getting in and out flat at the same price. That's just I already had a stop. So the second I got into position, it triggered out. Uh, so we'll pay some fees on that. But as we're coming back into let's VWAP, go. let's be a little bit patient. Obviously, NVIDIA break is going to work. I just feel like that triple top setup on NVIDIA has been a really good one lately. So when it's in there, we'll take it, even if it wasn't in the original plan. Uh, for some reason, Mo Micron hasn't run my stop just yet. Mara, however, is coming into VWAP on its own run. I got that low, shorted back in in front of VWAP. If this can't hold on to like 14.65, we'll have to dump out of this as we're going to Adara. 10 o'clock already. Ooh. What's happening now? Yeah, market just pushed to the upside here for the SPY. NASDAQ also slightly positive here. We are definitely trying to recover from that big move down we had yesterday amidst ongoing geopolitical conflict. Uh, definitely worth keeping an eye out here for a lot of these mega tech names. Lots of catalysts there, especially with Tesla continuing to the downside. It is also worth noting we do have Fed's Powell speaking at 115 today. Uh, Fed Chair Powell speaking at 115 today. We had Fed's Barkin speaking at uh, 1 as well. So a little bit of Fed speak coming up later today, though no major economic data prints today, but we had some housing start related numbers earlier this morning. In terms of other stocks to keep an eye on, J&J, &J, Johnson & Johnson here, uh, to the downside, they did report a sales miss but an earnings beat here and announced an increase to their quarterly dividends. We also have uh, Intel. This one trying to recover a little bit here down about 1%. After a positive story, Reuters reporting that the company is uh, set to launch two AI chips with, with reduced capabilities for China. And last but not least, Morgan Stanley here trying to recover now up about 3.5% after reporting its earnings. So a couple of earnings names on watch here, guys. All right, we, uh, thanks Adara for that one. So we'll go bang on that as well as uh, we're indicated by Neil. Thank you for that one. As Neil goes long, I go short. And that's what's all about around here. It's about money, spinning money, it. So money, right there money, we go, money, money, perfect. Money. I got the trade I wanted. It was a great trade. I like the trade through. Uh, that's why I asked Neil like that 870 was great, breaking that top. But then it came right into the level that we talked about earlier, and that was at 875. So we did wick as high as 876.50. Okay, here we go. We're breaking through 874 now. So we've got a dollar fifty on the money. We are now short right now 876.08. Uh, for Nvidia, as that's come way in uh, now for us. So. Nice job on the market taking it to the upside, but we're just going to get out if it breaks above eight 
So we've already taken this profit. We'll play with house money. We're going to get out if it breaks above 877. Okay, so we'll give this one a dollar worth of room where, from where we are at right now. So that's going to be that trade. I'm going to leave AMD alone. I feel like this one, and we talked about this potentially being a heck of a lot stronger um, than it seemed like. So we'll wait on NVIDIA um, and rather than AMD. But we're in both of them. Now $1.50. Every trade we've had today has been dollar clubs, right? AMD multiples. Tesla right now is $3 and NVIDIA right now $1.50 as well. So it's just trading the bigger names, right? You're not going to get a dollar club in Rivian. You're going to ten well, cents. 10 cents is kind of equivalent, not right? Not today, but it's, it's, it has in the past. It's just not today. Yes. yes. That's the thing. I like, mean, no true catalyst. No, that's, the days Rivian has a catalyst, it'll give you a dollar. Today, there actually isn't a catalyst on Rivian. It's just the stock stinks. Right, so it's yeah, slowly going EV down every space, single day. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so I did, like, I jumped back into Coinbase, and at some point I'll. Ex we've probably explained it before, but like, we can have stop orders out. There's one of our stop orders you can put before you get in a position, which is great. But if you do have it out, anticipating a different level fill, and it's already above that price, the second you get into position, it just triggers. So I didn't adjust. I'm like, oh, I might short down here, so I put a stop order there. I don't take the position, then it goes up here, and I have a stop above 212, and I'm getting short at 215, and it just punches me out. So I got back in at 215 here. So I'm short this one off of VWAP on Coinbase, looking for 211. I'm in Mara as well, as this is starting to flush. But it did a wick bottom under 210. I'm anticipating a chance at a higher low here. So I want to make sure we grab the profit. I'm in Mara additionally off of VWAP. I got one fill at the bottom at 14.3. I'm going to start getting out in the 40s uh, as well on that. So Mara shorts going. Rivian, I am back into Rivian off of this. Like I got wicked out of it, but this is actually showing some signs of strength here, RIVN. Look at you. I probably don't need to be adding to this too aggressively. Like Rivian's above VWAP, it's putting in higher lows, and Tesla is still under VWAP. So on a day where Rivian's beneath, above VWAP and Tesla's beneath it, I don't know how much I want to continue to go back to that well. Yeah, I'm just tweeting this out so everyone can follow our link at Trader TV Live. Uh, also going to send out the live link. Make sure you check out uh, our mobile. Put, throw that thing up there, uh, Fabian. Uh, check out everything that we're on right now on all of our socials, including our mobile version where, um, you know, if you're driving and obviously you're not annoyed pay too much with our to voice. Uh, yeah, pay attention to driving. But make sure you get that out as it's the mobile version right now. I'm just going to tweet out some of our links right here. Tweet that out as we go. Um, all right, there goes NVIDIA. NVIDIA was just down at 874. Um, it actually went down to 873.50 uh, right there. So I'm wondering if that's just going to be a good out, and we'll just take that. Because, again, $3, like, not horrible. AMD went immediately back into the dollar club. Again, like, who would have thought about 164 short? on AMD, look at that high, 164.01, right? That leads me over to what is the number one trade idea for the day, and I don't know why, it's because we were in NVIDIA, so I know why we didn't take it. But there it is right there, AMD 164. So if anybody's looking for some trades, oh my God, you found it. At Trader TV, Sean, go have a look um, and join over 46,000 of you uh, taking a look at that. So go have, a, go have a quick look, see what kind of notes uh, I'm looking at and see if we can make some money together. And then I'm going to scroll down too. I mean, if you guys can continuously put your ideas down below there as well, we'll double check those and I'll you know, give you guys credit as you post your trades as well. So, um, all right, here we go. Tesla's still 250. I'm debating. I mean, we're still under VWAP. We're definitely watching that 156 level. Let's see if that can work. Huge missed opportunity by not reloading um, AMD. But hey, it is what it is today, man. Today's a monster, monster day. Um, it's a podium, and we're, we're always happy when that's the case. But watch out for Tesla one more time. Uh, maybe a reload up at 155.30 or so. Yeah, I was just looking at Tesla. By the way, Mara did come out. Coinbase is hanging on to VWAP, but Mara broke out above VWAP there, so we had to take that one out. Micron actually has not run the high, believe it or not, so I'm a little surprised there. But I did want to jump back into Tesla if it could come to VWAP. As you can see very clearly, Tesla, don't, Tesla doesn't want it. Tesla don't, don't, Tesla, Tesla don't play? Tesla don't want, <laughs> let's be real, Tesla don't want no VWAP today. You don't want VWAP today. Want no it's smoke. too weak today. It doesn't want that smoke, although I guess smoke would be usually when something's strong, right? But uh, yeah, strong no, it, like doesn't to, it doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem to want VWAP. In here. I, think it's a, I think it's still going to be a short the pop. Might have to adjust this to the, the low 150s. But I don't want to go there just yet. Okay, so Coinbase did a dipsy-do. There's a, 
Now all of a sudden you have this dollar to dollar fifty range that you can very, very clearly see. Why am I at two bids there? Oh, let's very go. Clear. Two fifteen and a half, two thirteen and a half. I'm gonna scalp inside the range, hold for the bigger four dollar move down on coin. So that's the play. So last time I didn't do it, this time I am gonna do it. It's still putting in higher lows. I just realized I have not looked at um, Bitcoin prices for you. Look at what IBIT's doing. Exactly the same thing. If IBIT breaks out, this is just Bitcoin. If this breaks out at VWAP right now, then I know Coinbase can break higher as well and I have to back off it and look for another entry point. So let's be careful. Whoa. Uh, I'm gonna go back over. We were just weighing the money lows. again there. Yeah, but look at, like, look at Intel what while all of this on? is going on. I'm not short Intel, but Intel, while AMD is trying to press higher, NVIDIA is trying to press higher, Intel's struggling at VWAP. Like, why is this not a short at VWAP is Ugh. the question I'm asking myself. And I'm not sure the answer isn't. It is, Neil. It is. Um, yeah, it is. No, I don't That know. was a rhetorical question. Yeah, no, I know. That, no, part, I'm just saying it's like it's so weak right now. I know. Part, that's what we do every day, and I feel, I feel like you mentioned that before. You have to sort of question uh, what you're doing because sometimes you wonder what you're doing, and you have to think through it uh, a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, w I thought NVIDIA was coming in again. Uh, okay. Well, there it goes. It just took 877. All right. Uh, looks like this market does want to bounce uh, pretty nicely. So we'll give, we'll give back that last piece. So we'll lose a dollar, well, about a dollar. We actually got a good price there, didn't we? Uh, yeah, so that, we're okay on, on what happened there. But 870, you know what? Was, was that just a blowout top there maybe uh, for NVIDIA? Let's try it. Let's try a little bit of a short here. Tesla again. just wicked VWAP. Yeah, see? So I, ah, oh, darn it. Um, all right, so that could have been something up at the top there again. I don't know, man. I'm feeling like I don't want to throw everything back going all crazy here. Uh, all right, there goes NVIDIA. It is making that move. Oh, no. Oh, that's too bad. See? It's okay. It's okay. Uh, we're still pretty much near the high of the day for ourselves. But at the end of the day, that was... Again, we, those are those wick tops. We might have just made uh, the top of the morning to you, NVIDIA. So let's wait to see if that is the case. I want to get back in just to be wrong again on that. 870, I just want to try it again. It's not, we don't, I mean, this is what it is. 876.80, we'll wait for another print uh, up there and then see if we can get it. Um, and then the stop for me, 877, 878, 878. All right, let's, let's try that. Um, there is some nice pullbacks on this. The market is still under 18,000, but that's it. If the short doesn't work now, we are done. I mean, I just don't know if this market wants to get higher here. We've seen NASDAQ resilience over and over again. We are now back into the short NVIDIA, 876 flat. Uh, we'll put a bid, we'll see if we get that, but we are short at 876.50. Danger, danger uh, here for Will NVIDIA Robin. as it keeps on trucking to the high side and we're short. Not good. One more try here, NVIDIA. 878 break, finite on this one. But the spread, man, is 40 cents at times. So be careful on these breaks when they break. Okay. So I know I just said that, uh, I said, and it's specifically, and I quote, Tesla don't want VWAP. Tesla did want VWAP, but thankfully that was a good place to go short. So it just wicked VWAP. When I say it wicked it, it broke VWAP here, resisted 156, and then came back down. So I actually shorted it on the move back through VWAP and got 65, go. 54. Took some out for the first half dollar. Now we'll shoot for the low of the day once again. So rinse and repeat, and ye shall be rewarded. Micron starting to break down. I still think you had to be a little bit patient on that move up because the NASDAQ was testing the highs. But if you found the right places to go to, you were perfectly fine on the shorts as we're going back to the desk. Adara, what's up? Keep an eye on BTTR here on the um, Amex. This is Better Choice, authorizing a $5 million stock repurchase program. Worth noting here as well, market cap of this one is about $4.5 million, and they have a float of 479,000 shares, so very small float here for BTTR, guys. Oh, oh thank you, Micron Chart. With, uh, oh, thank let me, you, Micron let me just Chart update. Is right. I'll try to get rid of this. So Micron holds that, this open down. range bottom here. I'm short at 119.30. I just broke 119 even. I have a bid at 118 and a half. That entire dollar and a half range looks a little bit tight because of that wick $10 higher. But it is working. It's a half buck in the money. Uh, the Tesla, we did reload that and got something. Ooh, an espresso shot. I like the, it. Uh, you don't usually do the espresso shot. No, I do. What did you just say? 
I don't know. I just missed what Randy just said there. <laughs> uh, we've got to go back over to Tesla just took out VWAP. So we had just oh, taken a on half dollar Let's and Tesla it. just came back up. So I'm going to wait for it to get show weakness back under VWAP. Do not want to fight this one. I've been scalping Tesla and now it's put in successive higher lows. So watch out uh, as Tesla starting to show a little bit of strength there. Preserving some profits here as suddenly what was all trend down, it's about to break a high. If this gets to 157, Tesla is just a different beast at this point if it does that. Um, let's go. Money, money, I mean, money, we money, say money, NVIDIA. Money, money, money. No mas. Look at that, man. We, we were, we're waiting for NVIDIA uh, to give it up. Not us. Uh, so here we go. It's NVIDIA. It is rocking uh, right now, and we've got it, baby. We are now $2 in the money right now as that bear just comes roaring out, baby. Um, we also look at this one. Our trade idea, number one, as now ended um, with a $2 or so, actually not $2, $1.50 there. We take that out on that bottom for AMD. Why? Because we have the biggest and the baddest short right now. We don't need to worry about no AMD. We are now almost $3 in the money on Nvidia as that's pulling back in. We are putting this up on the board right now, big time. Um, you know, Tesla probably should have got out of it there um, when Neil was getting involved. It broke through that high, that 155 and change. You know, we've really nailed it. It's been a good one there. Thank you, Randy, for that. Um, but we, there it is. Okay, so here comes NVIDIA, buck 54 and change, trying to go lower here. I, I, I mean, can we break it? Maybe we should just put a bid here at 872. Let's do that, 873. Okay, we'll put a bid at 873 right now to get out of something here. In case we crack in, we definitely want this short, but right now we're rocking. It's NVIDIA trying to get lower through 874. I mean, the market's trying to break here, I feel like, to the upside. So that's the danger spot for us. As much as you can celebrate wins when they're there, you have to pay attention to when they're not um, there. So I don't know. I don't want to get out. We are still a dollar in the money on this Tesla trade, but it did break above. Let's just put a bid now on Tesla. I mean, we, de we nailed that trade for sure on AMD. That was fantastic uh, where we were able to get out of that one. We did not get out of our NVIDIA, which is a little bit foolish, but we did get that AMD out, which is right at the bottom. And we talked about why we did that. We did that for this exact reason. So that if NVIDIA retraces back up, okay, we already have our outs. We've already taken that profit, so that's all good. But if NVIDIA traces back up, we didn't want to have sort of no whammy, no whammy, no whammy, stop. And then we have the double whammies on the chip names. So let's wait to see what happens right now as NVIDIA is giving it all the way back. So um, good, good look there for anybody long. I feel like, like me and Neil just mentioned there before. Meta's looking strong. You've been able to make money both ways on, a, on NVIDIA, but here it goes cracking higher right now. Yeah, I just lost VWAP on Intel. I think it was worth the shot. It was down a percent. It was relatively weak. Oh, is that for... Did you drop that for me? No, you dropped it for me. The other one. I was going to say, I'm like, my, I still have like my heaters on and everything. I, I put mine on the I heater. Think. Yeah, it's uh, not there. black. Yeah, look, I drink my coffee black. That's the easy way to tell. But uh, there's my, Micron took out resistance as well. So both the chip names that were into the short side just came out. Yeah. yeah. Micron will be the L. I think the bigger one because I was in it first and had more on. Coinbase, we had that one. It ran V. That's a bad wick, but it ran VWAP when I was still holding half the position for the 10 level. So this is now stair step up. Actually, the only thing that I'm still in is actually a new position, and that's Baba underneath 70. So I know it's above VWAP, which sometimes really is wrong. a different plan, but here's 70 even on a breakdown at the open. And then on the daily, this is the 711 on Alibaba. And I was saying break down at that price, but we didn't actually get the short at that price. We had to wait for it to come back up. And I'm short till the 70 level, give it a few pennies above that, but you're absolutely flying to the upside. And what's crazy is, like I came in with mostly short ideas, but the, like it was a pivot to a setup long that I liked on Nvidia. And this was the same long we had yesterday. It was just opportunistic. Like it does the break the low of the day, and this is just a setup. It breaks the low of the day, wicks back up on strength, does a consolidation breakout. Breaks the low of the day, comes back up, and does a consolidation breakout trade. That particular trade 
has been golden at the open on NVIDIA. I don't think it's lost. I think I've lost one time Boom. doing that particular setup. And even then, you're risking like 50 cents to a dollar as we're going to an era. Yeah. They just have the, the DXY up here, but basically we're getting some comments here from the IMF to keep in mind. IMF saying that the central banks should avoid premature policy easing and that confidence in economic soft landing is growing in the financial markets, but persistent inflation could trigger instability. So some slightly hawkish comments here coming from IMF, guys. IMF. Ooh, okay. Watch Ooh. out for that monetary Ooh. fund coming through. Um, okay, so we did pretty good here uh, by shorting again Tesla uh, back up there. We did bad shorting NVIDIA, uh, that is for sure. But the Tesla trade has been good for us. We shorted again at 157.10. You can see it just ripped up there. We actually got a one. These are 90s, and I think we got as low as a 60 there. Sorry, we got a 75. So we got 94, now it's coming in. We got 94 and 75. I better put a bid right here right now at 60 to see if we can, uh, to see if we can grab a 60 bid. Come on, come, there it is, okay, good. So there it is, man, hit the sirens for another short in on NVIDIA, on, sorry, not NVIDIA, on Tesla. So good out there. We just got that 60 fill. Let's see if we can flush again. We do have an LFT today, which means our loss from the top. We do have this name, NVIDIA, uh, that just ran the top again. Oh, no. Uh, up to 179. That's okay. We got out at 178 and got a good fill, so I'm happy with it. But you could see the damage there as it's now pulling back in and would have put us into profitability. Oh. Um, did AMD bounce again off 64? No, it didn't get that high. So you could see this is getting a little, you know, what's the opposite of shallow? Like these highs are getting shallower. I guess that's fake, still makes sense. Um, as we match that high, we matched 164. Now we're matching 163. So let's, 163.50. So let's see a pushback in on that one. And NVIDIA can go. Um, Apple Probably, can go, you know what it is. Yeah, Apple too. Apple, where do you think Apple turned? I it like went Apple. right into that 173 and a half. I was offering 80. Oh, yeah, I said, well, you guys know exactly. You don't have to guess. I actually went on a rant about what price is, this is sitting on the offer. It's at 88 because, obviously, when it goes up to the evens, I predictably offered 88. It turned at 78 or 75 or whatever the heck that is and flushed back in. So Apple, under VWAP, suddenly weak again. The market's testing and wicking the highs on the NASDAQ. Here, let's actually show, let's actually show the NASDAQ when we say that. NASDAQ trying to break the top and then coming back underneath. When that's happening, instead of being at the highs like it was before, Apple is suddenly under VWAP and looking like a little bit of a dog. So if it's gonna be a dog, then I wanna play a VWAP or trace on it. Let's let it calm down. I don't know if we get a shot at that 175 half again. If we had just sat in front of it, then it would have worked. That said, it would have been breaking a rule because then I'm sitting in front of the level and getting it on the way up on a stock that was at the moment relatively strong. Uh, Meta, which, oh, Meta's still strong. Okay, so Meta's actually still above VWAP and yeah, looking Tesla's pretty good, right as this looks pretty good to the long side. Right, bouncing off the 50 period on the daily, holding a consolidation above whatever we're calling the afternoon range. I don't have a name for it. Um, I don't have a name for that, but the afternoon range after things went all to you know what. So 502 looks like a good dip buy on Tesla. All we got is on is the BABA underneath 70, as it was a flat bottom break that we're taking the, the short back into the level as we're headed to at 1020 already. Oh wow. And this morning is flying. Uh, Adara and our small cap recap. IWM definitely lagging behind the NASDAQ and the SPY here, still to the downside, but trying to recover a little bit in these last couple three-minute candles for the Russell 2000. In terms of individual movers, we have a lot of them today, including WISA, this company trading higher after announcing a five-year licensing agreement with an HGTV slash PTV brand. They also do have a float of about 1.5 million shares, so low float for WISA. Next up, we have Jaguar Health. This one is a small cap, J-A-G-X, announcing a five-year exclusive uh, in-license agreement for their Jaclair treatment. And last but not least, uh, Better Choice, BTTR. This one has a very low float, about uh, under 500,000 shares, authorizing a $5 million stock repurchase program. So BTTR on the Amex to the upside, guys. Get down, get down. Yes, sir, there it is, yes, sir. Thank you, Adara, for that one. Oh, my gosh. Uh, the bears are coming out again in droves. Bang, right there. Good trade for NVIDIA. Now 250 in the money as we get that money right back and we say, 
Negative stock, nepa. There, nice move down. Now three dollars in the money. Um, we also do short Tesla uh, again and again and again. Uh, let's keep on making some money on Tesla as that's coming back in here into 50s. The market trying to give it up now. Uh, back into view up would be nice. What is this? 156.25. Well, we right there right now. So let's try to ring the register at 156.50. I just put it. It went to 48. Oh no! Uh, there it is again. Yeah, let's go, man. That's good trading uh, for the short, anyways for right now, nice downside move. Remember when I said we had a loss from the top? Well, Travolta's looking around and saying, not seeing that right now. Uh, $3 in the money on Nvidia, Neil. We are starting to crack lower and lower and lower right now. This is the day uh, that we've all been waiting for. Nah, that's every day, man. Every day there's lots of market movements, um, including today. Here we go. Now we're $4 in the money on this NVIDIA trade. And what's going to happen when we give this up right now uh, on VWAP? Let's see if the market does that. Nice move back into 870 maybe. Hey, you guys just want to take six clean on NVIDIA? Okay, uh, let's do that right now. 870 and change. Let's put a bid down there for NVDA and see if we can't uh, ring the register in and around there. So, so far so good. $4 in the money there. And it is another club. We have a $3 club, but Tesla says, wait, we'll come to that club as well. It's a dollar in the money now, it's Tesla. Yeah, I love that retracement trade. Both ways off to 70 levels. 70 to 76, 76 to 70 as the market heads back in. Uh-oh. Yeah, remember I said Meta was strong? Meta just lost VWAP here. I reloaded Intel on a lower high. We're already in Alibaba off the 70 level. Meta was the one thing. Okay, maybe there was a couple of others. Meta was that thing that I felt like if it could hold green, it could lead the way for us today. Do not like this one under VWAP. Haven't really, I, only long I took was a breakout trade, so I've been favoring the short, but we generally speaking like it when stocks go up. I want to get to Rivian for a second here, because great, I said I wasn't going to reload it the fifth time, that ended up being a good idea. But look at the turn that this is putting on at 870. This is probably a short up here as well, if we can get that. And uh, I'm going to go over to uh, Coinbase again. This just got right back underneath VWAP as well. So a bit of a fade out underneath yesterday's lows and showing signs of weakness. I think we're going to get back into some of these uh, to the short. Uh, shout out to you, Yonder. We actually haven't mentioned Netflix going into their earnings later this week. And I keep saying, I just, you just heard me say Meta was super strong. Netflix is up 2%. Netflix is pretty darn strong in its own right, uh, trending to the upside. But we've been looking at the names that we more actively trade. And I can't remember the last time we like to trade in Netflix. The spread's a problem. The volume, not the best. I think even Disney is usually better if you want to look at that one. Speaking oh, man. Uh, yeah, Disney was at, at 113. And it's holding the 50 period. Yeah. I like daily. Right? Yeah. Just before we go back to Adara, we if this market's weak, yeah. Yeah. Disney holding 113 in here looks, looks pretty solid. And uh, the longer it does this, I'm going to convince myself here, if it can hold this on this little move down in the market, I just want to see it dip, bounce off 113. And I think it'd be a long off that. But uh, we're going back to the desk for Adara. Keeping an eye on uh, super microcomputers here, SMCI, this one holding up pretty well, up about 4%. They did get a price target increase from $600 to $1,500 here. So $900 price increase from Loop Capital earlier today with a buy rating. So just wanted to bring this one up here, SMCI, guys. Yeah, that was, that was a rocket, but it's already starting to pull back. And it was carrying the chips. Got all the way to 930, not quite 935 but now already back $10, yikes. Oh yeah, Peloton. You know, not everything gave you the big push back into the upside, but I've been waiting for some of the weaker names to give you that VWAP look. There is a retracement of 315, there is a break of VWAP, there is 317, and here's right back under. So the VWAP retracement setup, uh, in effect, on Peloton here. I just realized, did I even pay for locates on this? Or, well, either I did or they're free. So one or the other. Uh, we're either thinking real trading or maybe I actually did my preparation this morning and paid for some locates. Either way, it doesn't matter. I'm going to get it here short. I'm on the midpoint trying to grab 14 and a half. I'm not really hitting the bid. And if it gets above 17, I would get out of that. Baba short, Intel short, trying to grab Peloton as we speak. And Apple's still tanking. Apple's almost at the low of the day here. Yikes. What is going on with Apple? Um, Meta's at five bills right now as well. It broke. Off. I mean, nice move coming back up. Stopped at 505 yesterday's pivot point. 
Uh, but again, yeah, here, see, sometimes I use pivot points. There it is right there. Uh, 505.40. I mean, too late now. That's five bucks ago. Uh, coming back in. I, that's, that's weird about Apple. I don't know. Why wasn't that on my radar today? I don't know. Uh, there it is, 173. Hmm. That's I mean, wild. this is probably, oh, yeah. There's that missing data. Uh, okay. Um, is this a long? I mean, down 0.67. General, oops, generally speaking, we don't like to fight uh, names that are counter trend, or counter the market. All right, let me leave Apple alone. This chart's not participating. I'm going to have a look at that in a minute. We're $4 in the money on NVIDIA, so that's going to be something uh, worth looking at and talking about possibly. Sorry, $3. Uh, we were, well, now we're $4, just a matter of the spread. Uh, there it is right there. We've really barcoded here. I don't have, now that I have this bid out, I'm canceling this bid at 870. So we do have a bid at 870. That's where VWAP is. I wonder, that's probably a good bid. There's no doubt about that, but we could even get lower than that if this market is weak. We do have Tesla on board as well. I mean, how, I mean, there's not much more we can do right here. We've traded three names today. AMD, PL number one on the show. NVIDIA, PL number two. Neil crushed that from 870 as well. So we've got $4 this way. Tesla, I mean, you know, so right now, what's up? What's up, Dan? Uh, they have been buying. They have been buying tech all morning. Yes, says Dan Emmons. Feels like it, but I don't know. Now they're not. Not all. Um, not all tech. Not maybe, all morning. But not Apple, and definitely. NVIDIA right now is $4 in the money, Dan Emmons. So there we go. Let's go to the downside right now as NVIDIA starting to get going here again. This is what we're talking about. I'm not throwing this trophy, that is for sure. 871 coming back in right now. $5 in on uh, NVIDIA. Almost two right now in the money on Tesla. So, um, hey, we're net short. We've talked about that. We want this short. I don't have any more bids out. Um, we're going short. So that's... Uh, my favorite word, short, uh, right now. So we're, we're there, we're five bucks on NVIDIA and we're a buck 50 on Tesla. This is what trading is all about. Yeah, get the shorts on, we'll hold on to them. Again, I, I do agree with the sentiment that there was buying early on the tech names. I think that's, uh, that's abated heavily now. I mean, Meta's underneath $500 and headed toward the low. Alphabet, which we haven't even talked about, has broken VWAP, it's trending down back in toward the lows. Microsoft which we, again, we haven't talked about. This is maybe strong, but it's starting to roll back over. If this takes VWAP, it's like the last one standing at this particular point. I know we just talked about Netflix, but um, look, man, Netflix isn't as big as it used to be. I know it, it, by name it's like Fang, but really it hasn't been one of the big ones for a while. Right, yeah. So I just got into Peloton and then back into Intel as that was slowing up. At, I know it's over VWAP, but it's underneath the pre-market low breakdown. So I'm back into the short there. And Alibaba starting to work back off of that 70 level. That was a new position shorting back into 70 because we didn't get the 70 breaks. So I want low of the day on that particular name. As we're headed back to Adara. Yeah, worth noting, we have a, a couple different things to talk about with regards to crypto. Specifically, there's a bit of a divergence in terms of opinions from market participants with regards to what Bitcoin will do from here. We do have the uh, founder of 10X Research saying that he is now bearish and has de-risked his portfolio given the uptick in treasury yields. Meanwhile, we have a another trader and analyst here saying that they could see a surge up to 120,000 for Bitcoin amidst this quote unquote doomsday rally with ongoing geopolitical concerns. So interesting with the same catalyst, some difference of opinions with regards to where Bitcoin goes from here. Worth noting as well, we do have Bitcoin continuing to trade sort of within this range, bottom of about 61,000, top to about that 72,000 near that all-time high. Right now, about 62.5 here for BTC. Ethereum down about 4% at just above 3,000 right now, uh, 3,000 and a half. We also have Solana here down about 10%. Ripple down about 4%, Dogecoin down about 4%. A lot of weakness right now in these crypto-related names. And we are brought to you by Benzinga Pro. Sign up today for 50% off their premier news and research platform for retail traders with code TTV, capital letters. Use the link in the description to go to checkout. So that last move down, we were just talking about Disney and the 113. Disney still holding on to the bid. You saw, look, if Netflix is going to be flying, Disney should have some like related strength. But if it's gonna hold VWAP here, strong stock, 
relatively speaking, it's not a chip name, so no worries there. It's not like a big cap tag, so as they fall, there's at least a chance it can buck the trend. Only in three shorts, not quite a VWAP just yet, but one more little push down, I think it can give you that shot to bounce off VWAP, but I want to be patient with it. Um, going back over to NVIDIA, so I did, look, I liked it for a breakout, and sometimes breakout trades are dips into the, like whatever the break was when it pulled back into the breakout price, you look for support at that level, but I'm just not there yet, because every single time NVIDIA's failed a break, or not, oh, hell yeah. recently when it's failed a break, the continuation has been the entire day. So I don't want to sit on the bit of that. Like, I'd rather be looking for an opportunity to short some weakness. Already got Peloton, which we had to wait for to make a bit of a move into VWAP. It just pulled into VWAP and then came right back under, looking for $3 even. If it breaks what 3 even, even, I think doing? there's like a, I think it's its own trade if it breaks $3. So if it breaks 3, we'll be out of this short at 315 and then look for like a $3 break on Peloton. I don't think it's SSR. Actually, it might be. Might be SSR, so you might not be able to hit that bid on a three break, but we'll still try. We're, I feel like we're getting way too confident in our calls because like, I mean, this NVIDIA is now $5 in the money and I'm not even like really considering taking it out. Um, I don't know, I mean, it's trying to break through 870, is it? I mean, it's just hovering around here. So if we do get that break, man, maybe we do get uh, a low bid here into 867 and change. So let's put that out. 868.50, something like that on that kind of a break. This is a little silly. I mean, I feel that um, taking, taking this much profit and just sitting on it seems a little silly, but let's just wait. I mean, we still have a big time uh, ahead of us here today as this market is a um, lot of time left. So let's keep going on it, uh, see if we can't get a lower bid here for NVIDIA. And by the way, I mean, you want to talk about some low bids. I mean, Tesla, she'd be going uh, as well, right into some of these lows again here. Uh, 154 and change coming through for Tesla. So I'm thinking about bidding that name uh, at this level as well, 154.65. Uh, pretty good there. We, we saw Neil get involved there. It, it does have its moments uh, where this name could definitely rip against us. It did rip against us. I mean, it came right back up here again. So let's take a little bit of advantage down here. Maybe just 155, like 05 or something. If we can get a 155 bid, we'll be pretty happy with that. Uh, right back into this level. So here we go. Let's take this out on Tesla. If we're lucky enough to get this fill, um, we'll take it out. So right now on Tesla, that's what we're looking for. A nice little bid uh, downside here for Tesla and get that fill at 05s. And that's what we're doing right now. So um, still to come on this name, it's Tesla looking for a 155 bid, which it looks like we're going to get in just a matter of seconds here. Yeah. Oh, we're going to do there. It is access. TC definitely on watch here up about 150% kind of out of nowhere uh, Zach Morris this meme stock trader posting about this one on X so trader circulating that post they also has a very small float we are talking about 441,000 shares this one popping up now close to up to 200% to the upside lots of social media attention on SXTC guys. Uh, shout out so yesterday it was Fisker today apparently it's GoEV up 17 per percent and absolutely flying. It's not the only thing. Uh, C is also, let's see, uh, SE also making C. a power move up 8%. So a couple of big time there runners here, uh, which are looking nasty, nasty to the upside. And if you're shorting these, uh, obviously Sick they have, look, they've got short floats for them. C limited, oh, no, never mind. I thought this had a better, own one. It's only three and a half short float. I thought that was a bigger short float. Go EV's got a short float. Uh, I'm a little disappointed in that. I thought, SE actually had a bigger short float than that. Again, I'm not trading either one of them. Peloton is the one we were just in. It just bounced off the low of the day where I had a bid out there, so not quite filling the bid passively, but it is flushing into the down. So I want to make sure we're, getting, we're letting you guys know what's happening on some of the names that we might not be actively trading. I just heard something in my ear about C Limited, but I couldn't hear it after all. I was like listening to myself talk and couldn't actually hear the story on C Limited, but it is making power moves to the upside. I do want to jump back over to Disney. We're looking for a dip buy into VWAP. It still hasn't quite done it. It's holding strength for now on Disney, still looking pretty good. It's not flying around not like Netflix, but the longer it can hold on to VWAP, I think the better. The 113 being that key price, you can see support. Like if I, I get a fill it. here, I want to give it to 112. 
uh, 19. Oh, Alibaba as well. That's starting to bounce off VWAP a little bit. So we shorted it back underneath when it failed this 70, but it needs to break VWAP and then get into the low of the day. So BABA was a 70 break that we didn't get till it came back above. And if it doesn't reclaim 70 even, at some point this could retest its 52 week low. I'm not saying today, but uh, this is another flat bottom break for Alibaba. Under pressure, these uh, Chinese ADRs. I wanted, uh, I wanted this plane crash. Uh, where is it? Yeah, it's the one where we're, no, that's air, okay, this one, airplane. No, no, oh, here it is, right here, it's this one. Okay, so, oh, God, we just got it. There it is right there, man. We will fire off that damn hot dog cannon. That is a $8 winner right there. It's done, man. It is an $8 winner on NVIDIA. Put that baby on the board uh, right there. So that was a good one there. Nice, nice little victory uh, for us on NVIDIA. $8 taken, boom, boom, right there. And by the way, we did take that $2 as well on Tesla. Like, I, I mean, I, I say this rhetorically, but I mean, this is trading, baby. AMD, monster move. NVIDIA, monster move. Tesla, monster move. I mean, you know, depending on the style of trade that you're looking for, there's a lot, a lot of opportunity um, in this market. And we're just going to sit here and try to take advantage of it for you live here on the show. And again, trading live can be difficult, uh, as you can clearly see. But we're trying to give you the positions that we're taking, uh, why we're making those decisions. And then at the end of the day, I can show you all three names that I've been in and all of the executions that have happened live. Uh, right here. So that's that's what we're doing. It's AMD. That's PNL one. It's Nvidia's PNL two. And then Tesla. We did have. We got stopped out there. We talked about that one. So that's why this one for me is PL three. Um, just because we did have that stop out there as this continues to go lower. And you know what, man? I don't feel any ways about this either. I mean, sure, we're out now of Nvidia. I'm gonna take eight bucks on that. When it goes back into the 200 period off of the high of the day, we're taking that like not nine times out of nine, but 10 times out of 10. So there's the play um, all the way to the outside. But I guess if you're doing nine times out of nine, it would be the exact same as 10 out of 10. So um, it's true. Yeah, I meant to say nine times it's out of true. 10, but you know, 100% we'll take it. There's the out there on that one. I never say 100% because I find there's very few instances where there's something you would do 100% of the time. Right. It's like 99.9% .9 or nine, 9 repeating or something like that. I don't like, spe I don't like thinking in absolutes, uh, especially in trading. The position board looks like it might have reset there. I am uh, flat. Oh, you are flat. Okay, never mind. Uh, oh, shoot, it's 1040. Sector watch with Adara. The first sectors we need to talk about today is going to be finance. We did have some bank earnings over the last few days today, getting BAC, Bank of America, very much to the downside versus Morgan Stanley, very much to the upside. So a bit of a divergence here in some of these finance names. Generally, though, they are trading pretty much to the downside. Energy, minerals, and utilities, both pretty weak as well amidst ongoing geopolitical tension. So keep an eye on both of those sectors. Tesla leading the bulk of consumer durables very much to the downside as well with those ongoing concerns with Tesla's layoffs. We also have to talk about, of course, these tech sectors, actually pretty strong compared to some of the rest of the market. We have NVIDIA and AMD both getting some positive notes from Evercore ISI. Netflix also trading higher ahead of its earnings. So both tech sectors a little bit more positive. Also positive is health services, UNH leading this group to the upside after its earnings report, guys. Uh, what is UNH doing? Oh, it's starting to give it back. UNH got all the way to $480 in the pre-market on now a what? big gap. Up. Now it's at 470 but the market's okay, coming okay. in. So a little weakness on UNH. This was never going to be a stock that we would trade. Let's be real. Um, it's big spread, uh, probably more of a, it's just a long-term trading stock. JP Morgan's testing out those lows. I wanted to go back. It was Disney. Like Disney, I want it bouncing off VWAP. It's consolidating a little bit, but the market's still pressing lower. I want to get to Apple. I have not made a single execution on Apple today. And Apple, this is, this is the one I'm going to slap the fail on. Because... I said Apple back into, remember we had that little bit of an outage thing, but right back into that 174, 73 half to 73, 74 even. Like it's a fade up there, I missed it. And all of a sudden you're breaking the low and testing $170 even on Apple. 
So uh, the entire, like that big move that you had last week, it's about to give it all up. Like it all started right here at 170 bucks. If there is a bounce today, you got to think it might be at 170. But uh, we're going to see that one on the bid, I think, sometime in the midday show, if not in the next 15 minutes. If I see a big bid, I'm going to go for the scalp trade uh, on Apple off that level. Rivian is still making that reversal. We were shorted a lot and then got away from it when it took out that local high. Now that's looking like a big hammer candle. I don't think we're going to see 870 again. I guess I'll work back into it off of the 860. Like on the 15 minute, you have some, you have some resistance at the 860 level. So I think we can short back into that one. So we're going to go, we sat this one out for a hot minute. I think we'll go right back over to it. Baba's still in. Peloton still within the same day's range. Uh, short the lower high into the current low of 308. And Go EV is still going. 17% short flow. Adara just, I asked Adara if she felt, saw any news on it, and her answer was no. And I couldn't find anything as to why this is going. But just a word, it's not just a 17% short flow. These guys reverse split. And when that happens, obviously the float itself gets smaller. So low float name, and now you're starting to, did you say it's a great company? Sharif just said Go EV is a great company. Um, his words, his words, not mine. He's joking, obviously, at this point. But you saw Fisker run, so sometimes things just squeeze. That's all I think this is. All right, um, we do have the midday show coming up, and then you'll see uh, Sharif and Adara put on these big winners and trades for you as well. Um, and then they'll have a lesson of the day. Uh, that should be really exciting. We do get a lot of love for that midday show, so stay tuned. In just 15 minutes, uh, you will get them on board. And honestly, man, oh, man, uh, we continue to go to the downside right there, 866 on NVIDIA. I mean, like I said, we're happy to spin this and give reloads, all of that stuff, man. Nice trading back into the downside. This is what it's all about. I'm not in anything right now, trying to be patient, waiting for that opportunity. AMD doing nothing. NVIDIA is still going short. I got to wait for, I, I said this has probably been like one of the top, not probably, I mean, we've talked about that, you know, one of the top names. Tesla, that was a great out as well. I mean, it's just about, you know, playing the levels and trying to be as patient as you possibly can with all of that. Um, all right, so Palantir, let's have a quick look at that. 21, I was noticing it wasn't doing much. We did get that bottom tick though down here, so that's kind of interesting to me uh, for Palantir all the way back in uh, 221.30. I mean, is that a level for Palantir? The, the interesting name for me was going to be Apple because like both Sharif and Neil were like, oh my God, oh my it's God, all, Apple. It just tagged 13s. App, Apple 170, 13? Oh, no, yeah. not 170. Yeah. One, I, uh, oh, 170. What is it with now? me and like 12 and 22 and all that? Uh, yeah, I don't know. But uh, that is a dip into 170 again there. Apple, pretty sick with it. If you bid 15s instead of like 11 or 12, you're long Apple off 170 right now and getting the bounce that you're looking for. But uh, otherwise, you're missing. I just canceled. I'll probably get tighter to one. Like the first time it bounces, it bounces off 13. The second time, it might bounce closer. That's the way I'll look at that. So I'm going to get sit underneath 110, just looking for the long off the 170 level. Like Apple was strong. Whoops, I don't want in right now. All right. There you go. I actually just put in like the wrong price and punched in and out. Hey, I made a cent. Uh, it doesn't really matter, though, at the end of the day. Going to pay fees on it either way. So I want 170, probably sixes and sevens. That's going to make a heck of a lot more sense. I already have a stop underneath, which is something we can do. So if it breaks, I don't like it at the even dollar, but it's not that far underneath it uh, for that stop. Alibaba, we have 15 minutes to go. So there's plenty of time before we have to get in there. And uh, why is GoEV is still going? Look, this is a little bit parabolic. I'm going to check the price of locates because when I pull up this daily chart, it is nowhere near the split high. And if it slows down underneath the split high, that is going to be a heck of a retracement short. And it hasn't slowed just yet, but the volume starting to taper off as well. So as long as it's reasonable, I'm going to pay for locates on Go EV here. If it's less than like, if it's over like 10, 20 cents a share, which I don't think it will be, I wouldn't pay for it. Uh, but let's go get them now. Oh, I never even, that's why I couldn't short DJT. Pay for short? I didn't do the whole, like it's, when we pay for locates at Real Trading here, uh, DJT was three cents a share to short. 
but you have to select it. It gives you a quote as the price. Right. You hit accept, and then it, there's like a confirmation page, and I all the time will forget to hit the conference. That's why I couldn't short DJT. I thought I just missed the fill. No, I, I, the order rejected because I didn't actually uh, put the whole thing through. But that's on me, man. Oh, that sucks because uh, it was a good short. But I'm going to go pay for that and go EV right now as long as it's a reasonable price. All right, we um, look at Fisker. I mean, Fisker got seven almost cents? a seven cents there. Oh, I was today. a guess. Yeah. I mean, it's back down to six now. Go, Fabian. But You're here we too. go. Yeah, I'm long. I bought some more at 13 cents. Like, I'm not. That's like a triple up. I'm up not off. even. What was the low? We put a couple hundred bucks. No, oh, the Fisker. low is two cents. Yeah. Yeah, you could have bought more down there. So Fisker uh, coming back egg. to life right there. Look at that trade, man. Face slapped that one. Uh, wow. That was a good one there for us on um, Tesla as that out. And then look at the Nvidia out. Although, you know, we were thinking that potentially it wasn't the greatest of outs. Seems like it wasn't that bad after all. Oh, come um, on. Well, on that one. Whatever. I'm still trying to find some more trades. Let's go back over to a name. I mean, I was looking at Palantir, honestly. I'd rather see that one absolutely rip to the upside if we can. Intel's getting somewhat exciting. Um, it's broken above VWAP right now. Oh, there goes Apple. Apple breaking 170 now. We should have probably, I mean, we still can short that. See, notice how I didn't step in into this one. Like, when I'm not sh certain, like, do we have a headline on this, Adara? Like, why, why is Apple doing this? Because I know China. Look, I mean, we could check out FXI. Mm -hmm. I, I probably read today. No, not really. 2370? Really. Okay, that's down 1%. Okay. So what happened? What? Needham cut Apple. Needham cut Apple, but earlier this morning? Probably. Okay. 1027. All right. 1027. Uh, okay. Well, I just... It was I, already turning. You about. know, Apple was starting to go. That's about 10 o'clock. Yeah, straight down to 170. I mean, I feel like this is a buy. But... It needs to, I want to see it recover once. Because I think that. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. Just because I think it doesn't mean that we yeah. stand in front of the sword. Well, I took one. it for the bounce play. I had, I had a six long, so it lost about 10 cents on the scalp trade, but that was like an even dollar gimmick trade. Like it either holds the evens and bounces, if it bounces to 50s, take half, take a bunch out. If it bounces to the even, it's 171, you get out of it as well. But now it's just starting to trend in. And I think it's gonna drag things with it. Ooh, I just got Rivian. Uh, so we just got Rivian. It did that wick top break and then the lower high off 860. Again, on the 15 minute, you've got that big wick top. So I wanna be short back into uh, Rivian, which we've been doing. Look, we've been taking shots on Rivian and obviously like the open move was actually the best move because it gave you very clean off of 845 down to 825. And then each reload, as it's making higher lows, there's two things you can do here. You can either neglect to reload as it's making higher lows and trending up, or you can just reload for less. So I was trading less and less shares, and then eventually just didn't short it again uh, after that last one. So again, it can be trending up, and you can still want to short it, but I'm not going to sit there and get uh, crazy about it. If it can hold 860, I'm shorting back underneath that. As uh, we're going to the desk for Money Talks. Another candle to the upside right now on the daily chart for the DXY for the USD here. Right now, we did get almost as close as 106.50 before pulling back a little bit right now at 106.25. Couple economic data pieces earlier today, housing related. We got building permits a little bit lower than the estimate here. So 1.458 million versus the expected 1.514 million. Housing starts month over month also lower for March. So coming in negative 14.7% versus positive 12.7% prior. So a bit of a move down there month over month. Also worth noting, we have some Fed speak on watch coming up for the rest of the day. Fed's Chair Powell at 1.15 in conversation with BO, uh, Bank of Canada Governor Macklin. So definitely something to keep an eye on there. One fifteen Eastern Time, Fed Chair Jerome Powell. We also have Fed's Barkin speaking at 1. So some of the many uh, Fed speakers and economic speakers we'll be getting later this week, guys. Yeah, I mean, Apple should have been the, sh maybe it was just a blind We're short. doing it again. A 164, man, right on the sticky note again. We got it, and now we're 50 cents in the money on that one. And by the way, we just went back over to one of our favorite stocks as well, Intel. Thank you so much for coming through, Intel. We like it. 
We like it a lot uh, right there. So a nice trade there on Intel as we just shorted 24 out some there at 20s, then at 17s as Intel is our chip of the day uh, right now. AMD is 40 cents of the money. I just put a bid, I think, down there. Oh no, I did not. Let's put a bid down there for AMD at 163 flat. If it breaks 164, we're just gonna get out of this one. I think this is well worth it. 15 cents worth of risk to try to make 85. I mean, I, I like that ratio. Let's see if we can do it. Come on, Intel, man. Uh, a push back into 16s, we'll take a bid there as well. Um, why not? And then if we can get even lower, I mean, VWAP is at 10s. Let's see a break of VWAP and put an order at 05. So let's go downside there on Intel, see if we do get that fill. First fill 16, next fill lower than that as we go. And then we will get stopped out. We'll just break out of this. Like if this takes 164, let's just get out. I'm putting the stop order in right now. A break of 164 for AMD and we'll get out of that. So that's what's happening there because we are watching NVIDIA, which yeah. is bouncing around 875. So AMD's high of day when Check everything else is underneath. Yeah. Yep, exactly. That's why I was saying to you before, remember, I was like, AMD is not a short, and then it becomes P&L 1. Um, uh, Morgan trying to fade out as well, up 3%, but... Never so, got to those mid-90s, though. Uh, no, oh, mid-90 dollars, no. Uh, it didn't do anything. Right off the open was its highest trade, just like BAC, I think. Uh, and right there, 90.50 coming into play right there for Morgan. Uh, there it is. There's another winner again for us. So, although it's just small, you know what we're doing right now? We're just stacking it up, man. It's been another big day uh, for us here again. Um, not much else to complain. Like I said, you know, yesterday we had that outage. That stopped us, but guess what? We come back right here today and we're unfazed and it's another one of those trophy days. So, so far so good here, man, as we continue to go. Um, you know, stay in your lane. We talk about that all the time. Yesterday, we were red. We were long and we couldn't get out when the NASDAQ broke 18,000. So uh, gold is, I think gold is a great safe haven now. Um, maybe this is a good time to have Peter Schiff back on the show as GLD uh, really starting to go, man. He's been on the show two or three times. Uh, we'll see if we can get him back to 2050 right now. Nice upside move for you gold bugs, man. Wow, what a good day or what a good- uh, safety, man. Yeah, I guess what a good year for gold. I mean, I know it's been rallying since the beginning. I'm of, not a gold person. But no, I, I mean, you've been a, it's been a horrible investment what I'm saying, like until it's, the last six months. You either are, you, look, it's one of those things in investing, you either are or you aren't. You either, you either believe that you should have gold in your, yeah. in your portfolio as a hedge, it's but a it's hedge, like, yeah. but then like over the, over the years, you can also easily, when you feel like things are too bullish and exuberant, you've also been able to buy protection in the VIX. I don't know it hasn't worked as well recently, but you can, there's other ways that you can protect yourself. Um, you can have covered calls. There's all kinds of other ways you can do without gold, but I know people are into it. I heard you Look, I was about to celebrate Alibaba, and then I just noticed that this happened. I don't know what's going, what the heck is going on with Pack B, and uh, somebody get Aunt Kathy on the wire because I'm 90 percent, 90 something percent sure that this is one of the things that she buys. Um, Yuckity yuck yuck. I had no idea the stock was doing this. I wonder if they still own this. Um, but uh, Pack B, I'm kind of thinking it's down 41%. It's an SSR bounce. If it gets to a dollar today, giddy up, I suppose. Uh, so I'll be there. If, uh, if, it's, if it gets to a dollar, I don't know why you wouldn't trade it. But uh, yeah, Alibaba's heading back into the low, so that's working for another flush into the downside. We reloaded Rivian, which is on the NASDAQ last I checked, and this is me going New York first, and that's NASDAQ. But it needs to bounce underneath VWAP. It gets back to the 840 level, and then we'll take it. This was more of an open trade, and now you're putting in high lows. If it puts another higher low, do not need to be fighting this one. Uh, but wow, that is a, that's nasty on Pacific Biosciences, and we always talk about these SSR bounces. And what I mean by that is it's, it's short sell restricted, meaning you can't, it's down 42%. You can't hit the bid to remove liquidity to go short. And it's already made one bottom at a buck 60. Maybe I don't even wait for a dollar because if you can risk two or three cents, if it comes down here and prints like 62, 63, you could maybe risk less than five cents and then VWAP's up here at like 75 to 80. Small relief rally in this name would be pretty decent. But the other big thing is Apple under 170. Apple should have been a short, 
I have, this was actually an accidental scalp trade for a win. Like I punched in when I didn't want to, just punched right out for like a cent, paid fees. But then we did go long off, off this and lost 10 cents on it. Uh, looking for a pop to short back into 170 as Apple gives up the ghost, down 2% here. No story uh, for it. It just looks like it's maybe a technical fail break, like something like that. I don't know. Uh, what's my level for Apple Varsha? That's why I just answered. Like I'm looking to short back into 170. I'm sitting there probably way too tight to that level. We'll have to get, pick up another price. We're holding Baba short. We're holding Piton short. We're holding Rivian short. Uh, I'd like to be an Apple, but I don't want to hit the lows at 10.57. It's not usually the time of day that I want to short the low of the day. Yeah, I mean, I think like when there is smoke, there is fire, but like I agree with Neil there that, I mean, at this time of day, what can we do? We are four for four today. I mean, Intel is, is, is providing to be it as well. So we're really happy with the way Intel's obviously trading here. Um, today back in, we are now a dime piece. I mean, we like dime pieces around here. Let's put a bid uh, right there at 36.12. I mean, you know, I wish we were pulling dimes like we're pulling dimes on this market like every single day uh, around here. But uh, there it is, man, 36.10, right into VWAP again. I don't know what else to do, guys, honestly. Like, we're just showing you the trades that we're making. I mean, we've talked about this before. Last week, we were, there was a day where we seven for seven. Uh, yesterday, you know, we weren't, we weren't too pleased about losing yesterday, but that doesn't matter. We stay with the grind. And yesterday at our um, baseball uh, meeting, we talked about doing procedures and doing it the same way over and over and over again, how to get kids, um, you know, to play properly, to swing properly, to run properly, uh, to act properly. And it starts with leadership and it starts with being consistent with, with your formations and with your processes. And I mean, I just come in every day and do the same thing. Find the trades we like, watch the market, use, like we didn't have Intel on our radar. Like it's not on the sticky note, but it's a chip name. We watched it do this move. We preferred the short, we went over there and shorted it. We got hit on Nvidia, you know, then we went back in and made it PL1, playing momentum back in again. I don't know if we have lunch. Let me go find out right now. Um, we do have lunch. The menu for Tuesday, April the 16th with only one minute to go. As Intel says, you like dimes. What about 15 cents? AMD says, you like dimes. What about six times that right now? 60 cents in the money for Intel. Today's menu is lemon toasted salmon filet with rice and black bean and steamed broccolini. I say props up to that, but I could care less because right now we are spinning that money, guys, and it's been a hell of a day, and I want to thank every single one of you for watching. Make sure you hit the like. Make sure you hit the subscribe. It's a perfect day around here, um, and I'm about to go for that walk, call the wife, see what's good. It's Trader TV Live, and we always good, baby. And with only a little bit of time to go, I, no, nothing new just yet, but um, I'm going to put on that pack B trade off the low. It, it's too spicy to risk three or four cents to get to VWAP, which is at 175. But you know what? Like, every style is going to be different. And I've said this before. Like, what's weird? Like, Sean will say, like, you know, five for five, seven for seven, nine for nine. All my best days in the last couple of months, I had, it was one day like that. But really, it's just been about risk to reward. Like, I'll have like, losing stocks. Like, Micron, we're down a, about... 40, 40 cents on the dollar to what the NVIDIA win would be. Coinbase was a losing trade as well, but, as, but we're down less than we are up on Tesla on it. So it's really about that for you, whatever works out. And that's where I find the cons my consistency comes, consistency comes to that because I have found over, the, over time, most of the worst days are when you have like one loss, but it's like a loss that's more than you're making on that setup. So I just want to say, you know, keep into your style, stay with your grind, whatever it might be. Right, just look at your Long P Nicola. Oh, you know what, though? Here's the thing. I if mean, you, that's all that matters. Actually, you know what? And I'll, I'll completely disagree with that because if you take something like, I don't care, if you take something like an NVIDIA breakout trade, like the NVIDIA break is a setup that I've had maybe one or two days out of the last seven. It has nothing to do with like range bound trading other stocks. And it's going to make or lose more money than those things. So what I'm saying is at the end of the day, look at your PL. No, I, 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 but I say like more like at the, but I, at the end of the day, look at the PL per style of trade. 
because right. if and I'm figure trading out what's bad for you. Yeah, like if I'm trading rebate stocks, then a lose on that has nothing to do with the win. So I'm trading each strategy as their own and then grading each of those strategies. Exactly. That's what ends up mattering. If you look at your overall P&L on a day where, okay, like NVIDIA had a breakout trade that was fantastic, it'll be skewed. So I always want to make sure that I'm staying within the pocket and grading each one differently because that's what it's all about. You might trade 10 different setups in a day. You might trade two setups in a day. But you want to make sure that you're grading each one of those individually, not just stock by stock. If I'm taking an SSR bounce on pack B, which I think I will, then I got to measure that against other SSR bounces, which I haven't had one all week. So you've got to make sure you're staying with your grind. We always talk about process, but there's no bigger process than that. Measure each strategy against itself. And, that, and that's why we show the leaderboard, so we can show you what strategies are working profitable-wise. So, All right. Uh, thank you, Neil, for that one. And let's go now over to the big desk with the big man in the polo. It's Sharif and Adara. Joe! What is up, beautiful people? Welcome to How to Trade, formerly known as the Midday Show. That in the beautiful teal there is your girl, Adara, and I'm Sharif in the, in the gray. Yeah, just the regular run-of-the-mill gray. Uh, and we're going to wait for everyone to come on over 